Greetings, everybody. It's Blair Johnson with the Badass Records Podcast, welcoming you, welcoming you to another installment of the show. Uh, new episodes drop Thursday mornings. Um, audio can be found wherever you stream your music and your podcasts. Uh, videos on YouTube and all of those goodies are embedded in the site badassrecordspodcast.com. If you or someone you know is interested in uh, joining me for an episode or would be a good candidate, hit me up at badassrecordspodcast at gmail.com and keep tabs on the program via the socials, um, Twitter and Instagram. Last but not least, if you feel inclined to support the show, make sure you check out the merch tab on the website. Get yourself a hoodie, a coffee mug, a baseball cap, a sticker, whatever floats your boat. That's all I got for you today. Appreciate you stopping by. Hope you enjoy the show. So, uh, I think we'd be looking at episode 120 of Badass Records Podcast, FK Menace. I, I, yes, I feel like, you know, that name deserves a, a better sounding introduction than that. Like, a, <laughs> let's get ready to rumble or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, The ring um, bells, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, gotta, I gotta practice and have, have uh, a variety of introductions, but thank sure. you very much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, FK Menace dot squarespace.com mm -hmm. and then yeah. facebook instagram uh youtube apple music spotify the whole nine yep. you can check out you, your your ig bio says uh artist activist dj producer you got it run me through i know dj yeah and I, I mean i i think everybody's definition of artist is different yeah. from one another so tell me about the other three yeah i think uh I think, uh, let's see, I started, so I guess you could say I was, the artistry was, was the first, you know, okay. and then, and then, uh, you know, kind of, uh, molding that until I came here to, to Kansas city, um, as a, as a painter first and foremost. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I'd gotten in, in, into the, uh, to the art institute, um, KCAI. Coming, mm -hmm, yeah, nice. coming from San Antonio. It's actually how I met Dink. I met Dink like the first eight hours I was here. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. he, we've, I've known him since I literally touched down and, um, yeah, I mean, um, that didn't t go as planned. Uh, think, yeah, I yeah, okay. yeah. I just, I only did like a year and a half. Okay. I think life happened and, um, you know, just personal interest in kind of where I wanted to be at. Sure. Um, plus I came here with nothing. Uh, okay. I didn't really have any financial help. Uh, really Oakland born and San Antonio raised. Yep. You got it. And you, literally came here for the art institute yeah okay yeah and, and showed up with nothing <laughs> Shut up, no no, no. I, just, I didn't have I anything. figured out I, I literally i had like a box of things for the dorm i was living in uh you know my mom's came with me and uh i think we she grabbed me like you know um a decent vehicle that you know definitely was gonna be able to pay for just because you know i just wasn't prepared you know um academically or or just in a transition to move. I think it was just more to to get out of where I was at. Okay. Because uh, the circumstances that I was in was just it was it was a lot, and it wasn't meant for me. So coming here was like I'm free. I'm here. Like I uh, get is, to. Is, I had a, f a few buddies and, and a couple of guests have, that have gone to the art institute. Are they select? They're selective about who they admit, right? They can be a little selective. I would say, in my family, like hit me with it for for some years but um they were actually reviewed my portfolio twice and got to so you got had to, to like, send them something and they were going to make mm -hmm. a call based on whether or not they liked it P pretty much and there is like a there is a uh, what do they call it the admissions person uh -huh, you know uh -huh. we became really cool and so she goes hey you know i want you to come here you know this is and that like let's let's look at your portfolio again and you know kind of see what we can do so they really stretched out the money money because it was supposed to be um i think it was like College for Creative Studies in Detroit, which I had done a pre-college segment uh, for two months studying um, furniture and interior design. Oh, wow. And then, so I did that portion. And then uh, I think Laguna Beach was like second in money. And then Kansas City was like the first. So I was like, whatever one is giving me Available more money. Available funds for, to pay for mm -hmm. tuition. Exactly. And et cetera. Okay. So it really left me, Kansas City really left me with like a tad bit. 
like almost a full ride if you think about it um and at the time like again i was just trying to get out so i was not prepared for anything but i think by like month three i was like okay like you're in college like let's get it together let's like put some weight into this and man i just really like stretched as much as i could and things were just not working out and other life things came into sure. play so i was like you know what like this isn't so you what know. did that look like when uh, she said, let's look at your portfolio? Was she basically saying we need to make some change? We need to make this look different than it does? It was more like um, going back to the board and being like, hey, like this guy's worth it. Like, can we give him some more? You know, can we st- stretch his money a little bit, cover him a little bit more? He, okay. This is where he's coming okay. from. That kind of you deal. You have to change your art, though. No, you, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. I think the art that I had at the time was, you know, it. Um, I had like three pieces in there that had placed like state that had gotten like one got to nationals in texas um, mm-hmm. cool yeah so i mean I, is, I was pretty uh, good you know acrylic or? yeah just acrylic i had a couple oil pieces but oil wasn't my i hated the <laughs> it was yeah no i'm good i was all acrylic a lot of it was like family portraits um you know found objects uh you know uh, still life setups they're all paintings so now um, did i completely miss seeing images of some of this stuff on your site yeah, there's nothing on it's there. Not th- you don't have any artwork online? I'm I'm sure maybe like if you really scroll through my Facebook okay, all okay. the way at the bottom, you might find some pieces in there. But the quality of picture is not gonna do it justice. And none of these pieces I really I, I mean, I own like two pieces and they're the last two pieces I made. Where as are a all the rest of them? My mom's kept them. Okay. I I think three, four of them are hanging up in her house. Okay. Right now. Okay. Right on. So that's so about you- it. Yeah. Sketchbooks I still have. You, you know. Have you hung your paintbrushes up, as it were? Kind of, okay. man, honestly. And you feel... I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I, I just felt like painting was like a way to survive. A, painting was like a way to escape what I was going through as a teenager. Um, painting was a way to keep me aligned, uh, was a way to... Uh, I was introduced to how to deal with, um, you know, ADHD Okay. Um, staying out of trouble, sure. things like that. Ooh. So when I came I still here, I haven't figured that one out. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, man. I think when I came here, I had no excuse to paint. In a sense, I really had no inspiration. Uh, I was going through a culture shock coming yeah. from Texas to yeah. here. It was like, just a lot was going on. Yeah. So I wasn't really, I really felt like I wasn't really an artist. How I was being challenged in these other ways that. But it's always exactly part of your fabric. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, activists, what? So. Um, I would say so. Let's do. Uh, let's go to the producer because okay. I actually took two years off to just go to work. Once I got with the board of directors and everybody, and they said, "Hey, um, you know, here's basically your second chance, or like anything you want to say, so that we can kind of like reapprove." Because I had submitted like a some tor- some sort of like a, an appeal to stay in and like my plan and these things, but I KCA. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. But then I was just like you know what, like, for what? Like, it's not really, I don't really feel this in my heart that I want to continue. And though I had people, like, trying to convince um, or give me the other um, side of the coin, funny enough, uh, when I made this decision, I talked to Dink about this. Um, and I said, hey, like, this is how I'm feeling. And he goes, I'll, I'll never forget it. He's like, if you feel like you don't, like, if you feel like you're not waking up and you really want to do this from the jump, like go out and paint and do your thing like then then there's there's a blockage there's an issue there you know you're you're um you have to go and find what drives you to get up every morning and go make that happen and i just thought in that moment it's like this is not it like i'm not it's not working for me um so i can't it's i i feel a certain way about like opening the man gush valve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know because Dude, supposed to be whatever. Yeah, he's fucking amazing. Yeah, like the moment he sat down. Yeah, I like, I like this dude. And then his story was, his story. He was um, episode one hundred and seven. Mm-hmm. If, if anybody wants to check it out, but but so he says this to you, and you're like, yeah. At the time, I'm just like, you know, I had to, to I had to really really think on my decision and what I was doing here and how it was going to affect other people and all that other stuff that is kind of like branded in my mind because. People were like, you know, families cheering me on. They're like, all right, well, this is what? Let me see. I think at the time, 
second or third to go to college, I guess. My okay. aunt is like an OBGYN, so she's like paid for her schooling, like, sure. you know, done her thing. Um, but for me, I always just felt like, yes, there was some sort of added on pressure, but yet I really didn't know anything or any anybody or anything I was doing at that time. Um, so I just took the leap of faith and I said, all right, well, let me, I'm going to back out of this, uh, was with somebody at the time and, um, she accepted that response and I just went to work for UPS for two years, two or three years. I was on the dock between UPS, uh, central transport and FedEx, um, you know, just working graveyard shifts and, you know, just doing the most. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So those really, those years were really crucial, but then I started to understand and realize like, man like i had to refine it so i understood that something was missing and i was like man if there's some sort of artistry in there and i know it's not painting but the last two pieces i painted were in that that um uh probably like the first or second year i was out i had finally painted something again um and then i in that time all together actually found the djing portion and the producer portion and was trying to figure it out so when i did those two one of them got put up for sale, uh, got displayed at Guadalupe. And I think the highest bid, there was no bids on it. I just wouldn't sell it. But the guy was in, like persistent about it. And he's like, I'll give you three grand for it. And I think that was his cutoff. And I was like, dude, I can't sell it. Like, It's like my final one. It's a picture of my father and my uncle wrestling. Like, I, I can't, you know? Still- <laughs> yeah. I, I have it with me. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I, have it, I have that one with me. On, yeah, on, wall on the own. wall, okay. like right when you walk in my door. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. I needed to say that one um, because you know it's it's a it's a good reminder and it's uh, it's in my eyes it's like a, uh, a picture that shows brotherhood, you know, and shows family and things like that. Yeah, nice. And so um, yeah, I, I kept that and um, that was the final bit of that portion. Um, I had a homie that. I went to school with who was making beats on his phone. Really? And yeah, there's like, um, so there's a brand called Native Instruments comes out of like Germany. Okay. And uh, their uh, equipment is is very like color coded and, and very, uh, very, very user friendly, which I found. Uh, so they made an app version and the app, you can actually sequence things and like add in and record samples and do all these different things. And I was like, oh, this is dope. Um, I knew I had a love and a passion for music. I just didn't know how music worked in like time signatures and things like that. Um, and I learned by ear. Um, so he kind of taught me, you know, literally like for a couple hours and I was like, okay, this is cool. So the more I started messing with it, I finally had released like just one song. Um, and I'm not gonna say it like blew up or anything, but just the fact that I had made something for like a two minute track on this app was just like everything to me. So I was like, man, like, joy, yeah, like it. I made this. It wasn't any. It's something I found myself. Yeah. Um, and now, s- when one makes a beat, mm-hmm. we are essentially taking pieces that would traditionally come off of a drum kit. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Native Instruments, like whatever was, um, you know, within the app, you would just use their drums, their hi hats, everything. Okay. Uh, and then I think for the melody i think they have they actually have like a uh, a scroll version of the uh keyboard okay so i kind of did it like that i didn't really get i couldn't really do any sample work but i knew i wanted to and i knew that there was an actual hardware drum pad you know for for purchase yeah so i was like oh man like i gotta get my hands on that um so I bought that. So move yourself from the phone. Yes. To- but he, the crazy thing is you could actually take the phone project and all the stems and files and actually transfer it to your software on your laptop and rework. They and take go up deeper. a reasonable amount of space. It's not No, cute. you honestly, like if, I mean, my, my boy would work on a project on the subway in New York and send me all the stems uh, through text message. And I would just save okay. them and airdrop okay. them to my Mac. And nice. It was that easy. <laughs> I was like, "This is this is incredible!" Like, yeah, right. I was like, "We could do whole uh, uh, collaborations, the whole nine. And that's what we did. Yeah. Um. So yeah, once I got my hands on that, uh, got a record player. Forget out how you know got one of those, which I still have. Um. Forget out how it all worked, and I was I was invested. I was invested in just making projects, making beats. Um, learning from my other boy, Zerk, and we've been together for, been um, friends since high school, uh, since freshman year, and, um, you know, 
picked up on on anything that you can do. I was engulfed in like making, you know, beats okay. all day, every day. So when you discover this app and then eventually get this uh, other device, when are we talking? Twenty. I was man. What was that? Like the probably like at the start or the end of twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. I want to say yeah. Okay. Twenty fifteen to twenty sixteen around that mark. Um, that was the launching point. That was the launching point. Okay. I think at that time, like I needed a. I had my girl at the time had bought me this record player that was from Target, but it actually had a, a USB mode to it, so you can actually uh, record that in the laptop through Audacity, a sof- software Audacity that's very you can play a record and record it onto the computer yep. uh-huh. and then use it to put like, exactly you can chop it up. You could like have like a whole WAV file. Yeah. Ooh. Instead of it being analog, which my boy Zerk was just all analog, he would, you know, it's MPC, there's no laptop, there's mixers and compressors and all these different things. So it's like you're just simply recording into the hard- hardware as opposed to having the laptop and having the actual WAV file mm-hmm. that you can drag and drop and do mm-hmm. the whole thing with that. Um, so, I mean, I found a way to do it and I was like, okay, cool. Like, now I can buy an two hundred dollars worth of records, you know, every Friday, and that's really that's almost what I was doing. Like I was just buying a crap ton of records. Was that the beginning of your collection? Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah. Which my collection has reduced now. Um, some of it I sold, and a lot of like the real gems I've kept. Um, and two, I think two other boxes just got. It's a long story, but they just got <laughs> tossed somewhere. Yeah. So, um, what do you so, think yeah. you're up to, ish? Um, I don't know now. I Are we feel like thousands. No, hundreds. No, I, I didn't go that far because okay. my yeah, my homies. No, nah, yeah, my homies like the whole wall yeah. stacked. No, nah, I'm more of like maybe like those two shelves right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I've reduced it down to. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. So yeah, I mean, once I got my hands on like things to sample versus things to collect. Uh, the sample portion was like buying those mystery boxes for like ten bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, or you can get them for like a uh like. Uh, you know, dig out the dollar bin and fill it up, and they'll sell it to you for five bucks. So there's, you know, just trying to get rid of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that started picking and pulling through that. I used to go to Josie Records and uh, Seventh Heaven, the Vinyl Underground, yeah. you know, and just spend hours there and just just dig, and yeah, find records. So it became annoying at the at some point where um, it definitely was a piece of like my breakup around that time like it really it really affected yeah because i was so which sucks because well so so pardon my interruption but sure. if you're spending hours looking and moving in the direction of making a purchase yeah that doesn't begin that doesn't even account for the time that you're gonna you, you want to you gotta listen to all this exactly stuff if you're gonna find cool stuff to use right so it's like you're spending time here and then you're spending time yep. here is that where you were going yeah it was 100 yeah. percent just like per, from the purchase to the end result to you know records being everywhere towards <laughs> you know just like our apartment that we're living in like that section of the house is like more for like the dining room and it's turned into like my studio you know all these different things that it's just like my time is like is taken up by this music and my relationship is not even being uh you know <laughs> attended to in any yeah, way you, you know make deposits yeah Hundred percent. Can't just be withdrawals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Otherwise, you overdraft quick. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and so I don't know. Like I, I think I was just excited that I was that I finally had found something that was for me, and it wasn't for the way I had it with um you know with doing the painting and thing and bang, being back home and all that. I was finally like into something that you know I could show um or you know produce and put out and and um. And uh, and even play that was like what I was wanting to do was like play beats Live. for people yeah okay. that would, I would an uh, audience yeah an audience for sure and I definitely play p- played in a fair share of audiences that um, didn't even come close to like the style like they might have been on some other like more underground like um, bass music <laughs> but I was on pure like hip hop stuff and at that time it was just it was an open deck situation. So I was like, okay, like I'm just going to go play my beats there and just meet people. And that's kind of like, the ship. um, no, no, oh. the ship was much later. Oh. Um, when you say open deck, you meant, yeah. Open decks. They used to have one. I don't even remember that bar. It was called, uh, the niche on Broadway. Uh-uh. Yeah. It was like a, a very, very tiny bar. I love that bar. Cause you, when you walk in, it was a bar 
and all the way towards the back it was like a big curtain and behind it they would used to do stand up comedy oh cool and then when you walked upstairs it was a smaller version of that and they had like um this system that is still surviving to this day it's it's built by this uh this company that that um not this company it's like a group it's a collective they've they built it themselves so they just keep transporting it everywhere into these bigger spaces around the city broadway and what um broadway wow oh man what was that uh honestly like right um uh uptown theater okay so like across the street maybe a couple down from that uh uh edible arrangements or okay. the t-mobile store okay. it was like within that strip there okay and yeah it was a cool little bar it had a little outside deck and all the dopest producers that still produce to this day um or have turned into great djs excuse me um they uh just I don't know, like kind of open me, open, open arms and the whole nine. And I just had a place to, to go and showcase beats. Cool. Um, and I met so many other people along the way that really loved everything that I was making and doing that, you know, um, I just kind of kept coming around and started to find a little bit more of my, my community, you know, uh, versus any of the, cause the first community I had was like the art Institute people yeah. when they were doing their thing. Yep. So I was like, Hey, let me see if I can dig into this. Um, and of course, like in that time, DJing was kind of a thing too, because it, it, you know, they kind of go together. Um, and, uh, let's see, uh, I think all the way up until 2020, which is the last, the latest project I put out is how long I've been making beats since that time. I haven't made anything since. Okay. So, so yeah. I saw, uh, like seven tracks um on the website and uh those are all yours right i believe so okay um, i mean most of them are like two and a half around three minute um and i mean it, it sounds like something uh that starts with a beat mm -hmm. um but meaning so, so the tracks that are on there aren't stuff you've produced for somebody else it's all yeah they, stuff that you can lay claim to they've all yeah they've all been for me i've never i was never the one to sell anybody beats or sure. go and look for artists i don't know i never i always felt like every time i played a beat for somebody they would enjoy listening but they could never rap on it for some reason it was like it was like it just didn't fit in that way i feel like there's a couple artists i mean don't get me wrong like i have like maybe five six tracks with somebody with different artists um between here in san antonio but they nobody ever and nor did i ever want to just sell beats i felt like i they were they were too personal okay they were they were it was another um i found that you know i'm a storyteller so it was, it was a way to tell a story with samples and with uh you know beat switch ups to different sound effects and that capacity that's where i wanted to leave it okay. so i just kind of said hey I'm, I'm just making these projects just merely for people just to listen to sure um so but when you produce something mm -hmm. it starts with a beat and maybe you put some keys maybe there's some samples there's definitely some vocals yeah there can't the, there can be that's mm -hmm. not you no it's all sampled stuff or? It, yeah okay it, it's it's typically come typically comes from like um let's say i pull like a sample from a interview that i really enjoyed of somebody Ooh. saying something or yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean things like that that might pertain or flow with the sample from a record i pulled off of and then maybe i might extract the drums from another record or i was given a drum kit or some sort sure. it's it's collaging essentially yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like how do we figure this puzzle out yeah and are you familiar with the pivot the pivot it's a podcast with uh, Ryan Clark, Channing, I forget his last, and then Fred Taylor. They're all uh, retired NBA, NFL. No, I don't think so. And, I'm about to and, check that out. Yo, yeah. it is so freaking good. Um, I, I, it, I found it because they had... Um, Jeez, who who caught the Super Bowl winning catch? Um, Man, dude that went to the Jets. <laughs> I'll try to remember. Uh, Nicole Hardman. Yeah, they had him on, and okay. it was you know he won two Super Bowls with the Chiefs, and then 
goes to the Jets and it. it doesn't work. They the Jets trade him back to the Chiefs, mm. and then he, you know, within the same season, he catches the Super Bowl winning right pass. Amazing. Um, and he's got a it's a, it's a long form, um, which I know here in uh, attention span shortage yeah. world that we're in, uh, you know, some folks question, but um, really really cool dude. Um, uh, really, I mean, I, I just last night started about a year ago. They had Shaq on. Okay. And I, I think he's uh, lovely. I yeah. just really, you know. Shaq is great. Um, yeah. so, so that's going to be the really only the second full episode that I dive into. Mostly I'm just catching it on Instagram, you know, clips, and, clips and things like that. Yeah. But today, just a few hours ago, I saw that they had, um, a beautiful husband and wife. Uh, professional wrestler hmm. couple, yeah, on, um, and uh, I, I, I'm not um, versed these days in pro wrestling world. Uh, otherwise, you, I, you and me both. Okay, yeah. I, but I, but I, for a long time <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. as a kid. Like WWF yep. was my shit of course, for the longest time. Um, but they, uh, you know, uh, keep trying to tease out of them like um you know uh you guys are professional wrestlers but you're also husband and wife and you're you know by nature you're you're sexual creatures so does any of the wrestling ever spill into the like have you ever frog splash and and and, and uh yeah i love that and and he goes he goes I've done some diving in my day, and they all, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of just in the two clips of this interview. I love there's it. There's a couple little one liners yeah. that, you know, it's like, ooh, that would work. I don't yeah. know where, but a lot of places. Yeah, you could hear, yeah, yeah. That, that there's these little sound bites yeah. and sound. Because yeah. honestly, all you really need is a couple of seconds to make a beat out of, out of whatever sound that you're yeah. trying to take. Um, it's just how you're. Uh, you know, stretching that one or two seconds and manipulating these sounds to get what you want, um, and 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 stacking things on top of each other to to ultimately um, creating. Uh, you know, some people create new drum packs out of that. How sure. they stack different things and different sure. frequencies. So, um, now you did I see you have stuff on SoundCloud too? Yeah, uh, it's old stuff, early okay. stuff do when you, I first started. Wherever you're putting stuff, do you run into copyright issues? Mm -mm. Nothing. No, the only thing I've run into is like some remix I did of a Eminem track. I think I just found the uh aca I don't know what song it was, but it was an a cappella and I was like, "Oh, it was like my first time trying to uh uh pair like an a cappella with my beat." Okay. Like I had never done that. Yeah. Um and so I think it got waived, and, you know, copyright and sure. it, it wouldn't sure. allow me to play it yeah. so i i would uh just send it to anybody who wanted to hear it through email okay I was like, hey just you know yeah. if you want to hear yeah. it you know that's pretty much it but. so when you're producing it's your stuff you don't produce stuff for other folks mm -mm. And, and nor yeah. have you is, don't have an interest in it i don't okay. honestly Cause, that's cool because i i just feel like that's that's somebody somebody's trying to convey something that I know nothing about, like in a deep format. However, however they want to project that and like convey that and get that out to the world, I, I it's hard to take that. I I feel like I can only do that in a more of a videographer editor format. Okay, like I can you can see the story. Yes, yeah, so I can see were. this. Yeah, I could take everything, make it a heartfelt okay. moment, and now, like, what if somebody hit you up? And they're like, yo, I love the way you do stuff. I'm about to drop a full, uh, or I want to. I've got enough material written sure. for a full length, but I need somebody sure. to produce it. I think I think it would have to take down, take some like real sitting down and okay. like deep diving. Okay. I I feel like maybe now at this age, and maybe now because it's been so long, and I've never really thought about it. Um, yeah, I feel like if we just sat down and we really like really really worked on it, because I'm a detail kind of guy. Like, hey, all right, let me visually see this and see how this works. Then we can collectively come together and, and try to mold this story that you're trying to tell. Um, that's that's really like my best quality, okay. like organizing these pieces cool. and trying to make that happen. So, so when you're producing, you're, you're creating, uh, but when you're DJing, um, are you using some of your own stuff too, or is it all just uh, records and, and whatnot from other artists? Yeah, it's from other artists. Okay. Uh, deep diving into, into these artists today that are like, 
uh, you know, making mashups and remixes and, and, and uh, these different flavors, or maybe they're not using any instruments or any samples at all. Um, these are people that I found uh, or have watched or followed collectively throughout my years of producing. Um, they have came up and um you know even now as a dj now it's like they've come up even stronger to where i'm like oh man you're making some quality things like i want to mix this live for people so they hear like a different version because my blend will always be hip-hop influence with latin okay. so you'll always hear yeah. like a little bit of those hip-hop lyrics that you're familiar with in just a latin format and it could be anything from bachata de cumbia to reggaeton cool however you're just you gonna ever, hear hear uh, that difference. Cross paths with a dude named Gray Boy out of San Diego. I don't think so. Andre, I forget his last name. I'm gonna he's, write that down though. He's uh, act, uh, with his arm over the steering wheel. This guy. Yeah. Okay. That's him. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I can't necessarily say. I'm not really up to snuff on his newer stuff, sure. but his older stuff is real dope. Um, and I've always understood, I, I'm, I'm not positive on them, I'm pretty, pretty certain. I've always understood him to be the first DJ that used uh, real folks and real instruments. Mm, okay. So some horns, some guitar, some yeah. drum. And so, and, and so he put out a few records and then out of that, the gray boy all stars mm. and so it's all the dudes that and they tour around and play concerts really? and shows um he his i mean that that's part of the cover art from master the art um which is um which in my opinion was a pivot for him in terms of really getting uh scratch heavy nice. for the first time and not i mean i'm i think i'm just now realizing this or, or articulating it but i'm pretty i'm i'm a scratch snob like i don't if it just is too busy or doesn't sound unique enough sure i'm like but but if then when i hear somebody like i forget the dude that scratches for, or used to scratch for nas um like you know, it real immediately stands out mm -hmm. and and um anyway his style his style yeah, for sure yeah, yeah. okay so yeah. um dj producer artist Activist. activist yeah is that can we go there yeah now? yeah yeah. we definitely go there i i came uh became that uh recognized by the community during uh well sort of i just wrote this down on a sponsorship uh packet um it was the end of the pandemic is when i was trying to deep dive into other things as past producing i just wanted to make an extra income so that's kind of when i picked up a camera um and started uh, you know, just going everywhere, taking photos and things like that. But then I started taking, uh, you know, messing around with video and things like that as well. Okay. Um, and the only way I could see fit is uh, reaching out to small businesses and all the small businesses that were being created during the pandemic, all these people who, that had just said, hey, like, all right, I'm going to jump off, take this leap of faith and go do my thing. Um, so I figured, okay, well, this service is going to be needed. Um, so I started kind of going around different uh, um you know, past businesses that I'd worked for uh, to some new ones and some new found relationships. And one of them ended up being um, uh, Boyo Mexican Barbecue on the Kansas side, um, which they don't have that location anymore, but they have a location within the airport. Um, so they had gotten that far. This isn't POI dash O, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to have something downtown, right? Midtown? Um. On the west side, yeah, I believe. Yeah, and was then, it? But was it on the Kansas side? No, or? no, it, that would have been Missouri. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then before that, he had owned. Uh, his name's Carlos. He had owned the Bite in in the city market. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yep. I've heard. I've never met him, but I've heard good things. Yeah, like, yeah. Great anyway. guy. Great guy for sure. Okay. Um. So yeah, he, uh, was new to it. I think I remember seeing a couple of my friends or people that. I'd semi known um, in the beat community do like this production, you know, uh, uh, showcase on his patio. And I was like, oh, that's so dope. Like, pull up on the patio, play beats for people while they're eating. Like, that'd be cool to do. Like, you know, let me pick his brain a bit or let me just go and offer some, you know, material, some content for, for sure. the business. Um, so that's kind of what I started doing. Uh, 
did that for like a month. Uh, and then we kind of got into this, this, we kind of revisited the producer segment. And I said, can we like, you know, just do it on a Sunday and call it like the Sunday cook up or something. So I invited like six producers to come and play, set up the whole speakers, set up on the patio, the whole inside and outside was filled. People loved it. Um, and, uh, I thought it was, Hey, this is like the start of something new. Um, we ran that twice and then he said, uh, you know, why not make it, let's, let's expand it. I have a whole parking lot here. You know, why don't we add some vendors and I have the food, I'll get a liquor license and these oh, different shit. things. Yeah. Okay. So it, it really became like more of a community effort. Um, and at the time I was showcasing beats at another spot, uh, in KCK Strawberry Hill. I think it's, a. Is it the 504 Club or 405 Club? Something like that. Sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. So they were doing uh, those same guys, a little bit of them, and then added on. They were kind of showcasing beats and out on their patio. And they do like, you know, $2 off beers. It's, you know, a little special. And uh, it was super fun. So I figured, well, there's vendors here. Why don't we take those vendors and add them? Because I don't, I didn't really know any vendors at the time. So I said, just take these and then figure out which markets are kind of around that are doing vendor pop-ups and things like that and add that um vendors meaning like food truck uh or? so food trucks and and uh and just creative makers okay, uh, okay. or small businesses really uh like the, dink yeah maybe like dink dink okay. was you know i'd been around dink for so long i've seen what a vendor looked like or i'd seen his setup or um you know what that entails and and, and paying a vendor fee or when you should show up all these different yeah. things that go into an event um, you know, I realized that I was kind of fell into this role of being this organizer in a sense and like <laughs> being a performing artist too. Okay. Um, because bef- you're just adding roles, but not income to your, <laughs> right. I mean, he was, he's paying like for some of the content, but everything else kind of became, you know, nothing was ticketed or nothing like that. It just became a free event yeah. that we would do, um, you know, somewhat on Sunday. Uh, so then it became more of a, like kind of like a passion really sure. it started to become okay well hey why don't we have them perform and then add this and then why don't we add these elements then you know so s- started gradually like putting all these pieces together then we're like okay we got to find a, like a new name for this if we're not gonna if um you know if you're not gonna commit to sundays i was like the whole deal um and he's like well why don't we just do it like every second saturday or something like that i was like well it could yeah i guess I, that could be cool um but trying to find a, a little bit more of an effort more branded that was like the tricky part so yeah. funny enough i called my boy zerk and i said hey what would you what would you think of like another name for like this this thing we're trying to do uh you know it runs on second saturday and immediately we just kind of like oh well what's second saturday or what's what's saturday in spanish and uh, he's like sabado and i was like okay he's like so why don't you call it sabados and I was like, oh, shit. oh man, dude, that's on the money. Sold. Let's go. Yeah. I'm and so, so glad you didn't say Sábado Gigante. Yeah, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll Super Sábado <laughs> Sensacional. <laughs> we'll definitely come back to that portion. But Sábado <laughs> kind of became like the the name for it. I and did see. Does, I saw a handle. Is there an Instagram page for yeah. Sábado? Okay. Uh, Sábado underscore KC. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so this is a thing that's alive and breathing right this now. This is alive and breathing. Cool. This is my third year running it. I'm currently is literally the uh, morning work. That's what I was focusing on. But um, yeah, I think by the second year of it, uh, I got recognized by the uh, Latino Education Collaborative, and they awarded me uh, an activism award for in the community, um, you know, and, and being an organizer and things like that. Cool. Uh, so I got you know presented with an award, the whole ceremony and things like that, and I was like, oh man, this is. Is amazing. Some uh, somebody had nominated me within the community, and that's okay. what it became. Cool. Um, so Your branding and building. Yeah, literally. And- I, I, something uh, again. Something I just fell into, and I kind of still kept uh, producing at the time, DJing small gigs, uh, creating content for small businesses, and then running this event. Uh, so it was all just a, a big whirlwind of things that I was still kind of like uh dipping my toes into if you really think about it because sure. Sabalos is new, photo and video was new and uh producing or having a place to uh collaborate with other producers and showcase more was new and DJing and more spots uh that were that 
had like some weight to them instead of like these small little bars and things um was was me stepping into like these bigger roles and all these different entities um but ultimately still all kind of coinciding and collectively merged together you know um and I, i loved it um i think by the second year uh the restaurant was just uh, i think it was like doing well i don't think he was fully in it at the time like i think he'd wanted to do other things um but then money was a little tight and then they were starting to open up the the airport so he kind of just like moved this moved boyle to the airport and then i I don't know what he's doing now but he kind of focused himself on like catering and other things okay and so i was like oh okay um and i'd leave you homeless yeah, a little bit. So I'm starting to like kind of figure out like, okay, well, how does this work? Um, so I uh, I told this to somebody or to multiple people. I said, the great thing about doing what I do now is that everybody that I met in the forefront between 13 to 14 uh, or maybe maybe uh, 13 to 16, 2013 to 2016, I now work with on a personal level. Um, so I met my guy, uh, Steady P., and uh at a fashion show around 2013 right. i know that name somehow mm-hmm. yeah so he's he's a mc um i think you know. i might have reached out to him honestly you might have okay yeah, yeah maybe it's a great guy to interview for sure, sure. uh he's he's uh uh an mc uh an organizer himself um and he works at the record bar as okay. a um uh, you know he books and manages and things like oh, that oh yeah yeah yep that's how that's yep how. okay yep there you go and uh we met and i told him i said hey man like i you know obviously you know dj etiquette you don't want to kind of bother djs while they're playing but i said hey man i i really love everything you're playing right now like i'm new to the city haven't really heard much djs here um or really at all in person um because back home it was i mean it was like old guys not really doing a whole just clicking play but like to mix and do their thing uh turning some knobs yeah like, you know what i'm saying yeah what are, what are you doing man? Come on. <laughs> yeah and, making and me mo- cringe bro yeah and most of the djs i've seen were like at the lucha libre shows playing tracks for for the wrestlers and things like that you know real grungy real diy um so i had appreciated everything he was spinning and and fast forward um i think i think i've known him officially like for the past three years so yeah around that same time we'd kind of met again and i said hey like i want to let you know i met i met you a while back and whatever and this is and that and um fast forward a little bit he really became a fan of like my brand and who i was and these things that i was doing cool and it was just like so he cool. didn't blow you off when you said that. no 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 he was definitely like oh okay dope and he kind of took a, a little bit more of a dive and um he's an mf doom fan just the same way i am okay. so the mass thing was like a whole like <laughs> oh man like yeah. you're doing your shit i'm dope um and that kind of led to this like relationship of uh how could we help each other or like what what's out there for you um so sabalos uh became um uh structured in lemonade park and the west bottoms okay and we thought that was perfect because of the scenery what it already provides already provides a sound engineer a stage um a lot of what we were doing in the parking lot was all me so i'm bringing all the tents or some of the tents that we have on the equipment the mixers everything the speakers so i had time every time every time it was all me bring i would have to get there two hours early set up the entire uh basically the stage and then book all these people Yo. taking fees like the whole nine like carlos at boyo was was pretty much providing like any extra tools any things that needed to be made um the restaurant itself uh and just just a space so a lot of it was just like me trucking along like all right here's what we add here's what we take out the whole nine and once it became lemonade parks you know place now like um yeah a lot of that was extracted i didn't really have to worry about all that um and they the staff at record bar since uh they own record bar lemonade and mini it all became more of a a playground and a and a comfortable space to do to do me and everybody was backing me and but uh, you so, so it's happening it's happening now and you you still every time have to get there no two hours or oh. so now that lim yeah so now that lemonade is built in before you were having bef- to- before at Boyle. It was all like just parking lot, so I'd have to like create it, assign spots, 
chalk the whole nine. Now it's like I have to go and design a map. Oh, I've I've designed a map, but now I have to figure out like who's going where or how to u- utilize the space. What section of things are we having? Mind you, we've added so many other things to it. So like, um, at one of the Boyle ones, we had Dink pull up and he he painted a uh, a canvas that he'd brought. So I said, well, okay, what if at this next one we have uh, four canvases that people paint? So. Um, I don't know if he spoke about it, but we have a mutual friend named Alex Cruz um, from uh, Chicago. But he he met me and Dink at the same time. Okay. Uh, and he's been living here for like four or five years, I think. Uh, he's getting ready to move back, but he, he joined my team. So he's like, hey, I'm going to take on the uh, design portion, if you would like, because I was also doing all the flyers, all the individual stuff. So he's like, I'll take that off your hands. Is that who was barking at you earlier about? Or, or, oh, that was uh, the owner of Maid Mob. So I'm planning their first. Oh. Fr- I'm taking the organiz- or organizing for uh, the first Fridays and booking those artists and trying to get them to perform at, at our first Friday events. So, but um, yeah, Alex took on all the design things, elements. Uh, they already had sound, food, alcohol. So I just needed to really fulfill it in with uh, more producers. But also wanted to expand into into having bands and and uh, singers, performers, more vendors. We had more space to uh, supply more vendors, and uh, I wanted to go after funding too, sponsorships and things like that, and all that. So all that was how just, did that work? That portion it w- went out pretty well. I got funding like and sponsorship. Yeah, you had some success. Yeah, had some success. Um, I had a timeless refinery. I had a, a from the earth illicit. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, what's the other one? Home State Dispensary. Uh, some other businesses that I'd worked for had okay. submitted money too. So we we were able to to pay. To, to support Sabados. Yeah. Cool man. So we were able to get like uh you know extra tents. Uh, we were able to get like some extra um you know cords and equipment, anything that we needed. Yeah. We got like a couch because I actually set up, which is actually this is a perfect opportunity. Um, this Sabados also supports individual podcasts. So oh, we actually, really? yeah. So we actually create a podcast area. I don't supply the equipment, but with funding, hopefully we can in the future. Sure. But we have like an area where you could just set up yours, and then we would in due time like start to kind of collaborate that, film it, edit it, the whole nine, wow. and then it would be like a like a cool. collaboration on site. Yeah. Cool. Yep. I've uh, I've I've recorded three. I think it's only three. Uh, remote episodes cool. and uh they have been two have been uh music venues in the area and uh i got this wild hair that I, I, i'm gonna travel to somebody and so i'm nice like, communicating with all these people some in la a couple in chicago and I ended up going to this dude's tattoo studio in new york okay and so i mean i i, I got like a the, a red eye flight and, and yeah. flew in and Ubered to his tattoo studio and set up. Super dope. Did it, broke yes. down, Ubered back to JFK, flew home, was back home that night. Wow. Um, but point being, like, uh, for those three, I've told, I was like, it, you know, however long our conversation goes, there's an hour on, on the beginning and the end to set up and break down. They're like, what? I'm like, well, how else do you think this works? Yeah, like you yeah, have yeah. to have all the stuff. You're just gonna walk in and press record. Yeah, like, and actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, I brought no just the clothes that I was wearing. I had uh, a suitcase and a backpack just stuffed with all this gear. Nice. And TSA at JFK was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, right." What, what do you mean? And he's like, "What is it? Microphones and camera and everything's like bubble wrapped and really- yeah." And I was like, I was recording a podcast, and he was like, "Where?" And yeah. I was like, at this dude's uh, tattoo studio in in Long Beach, uh, and he's like, um, "And now what?" I was like, "Are you? Is it normal for you to be asking me? I don't have like weapons or drugs." Yeah, and yeah. He yeah. was just curious. Yeah, just curious. He's like, because the literally the suitcase was just full. yeah, it's it's not so, no clothes, no nothing, nothing like just yeah. what I'm <laughs> like. I got you know. To the airport, and I was like, dude, if I like step in a puddle or something, yeah, oh, dude, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Somebody spills their coffee on me, I'm wearing that yeah. all day. Oh, 100%. Like, but so I feel you on the, and it, that's, you know, it's not just the hour at the space before and after. Yeah. It's getting all the stuff together at home, it's making My a checklist. Because yes. God forbid you forget something yes. that literally will crumble all of that, the, like a cord. Yeah. 
you know yeah. having like, having the extras having yeah the checklist or, or yeah all that it's communicating I mean, with the vendors yeah yes you know and it's not like it for me anyway uh a thing where you could just be like okay i'm gonna turn off that switch i don't have to think about this project anymore no. uh-uh. it's constant constantly because by the time we're done with that that month we're already preparing for that second month. Yep. We got to promote yep. and things already have to be booked. And, you know, it's it's a lot. But what I can say about myself and what I've learned is that um, I, I grew up like doing a lot of cleaning. My mom was pretty strict, so I wasn't really out the house too much. Uh, I was really at home taking care of my sisters. Um, so I cleaned and organized a lot. And even just with somebody with ADHD or just creatively, it's like you're consistently trying to figure out this puzzle and whatever it is that you're trying to produce out um and for me it was just like a big puzzle and how does it all look you know from a from a uh, above scope and um what things you have to check off and so I, I came to find out that i was very good at it and it made it ran made it run like very very smoothly cool, yeah with a lot of other people they're That's like great. oh this is smooth this is good you know there's no um you know maybe a few tweaks here and there and things like that but always for, yes, always be tweaking 100 percent. because the minute you're content the minute yeah. your stuff starts to exactly you need that joy and yeah uh and you know for my uh, like this this has been like the craziest swing from sheer terror mm-hmm. and anxiety yeah to in the, to now it's like uh, you know uh, it constantly refilling the the tank of accomplishment and pride exactly. and you know what it is it's it's a teeny tiny little thing but it's i don't know it's everything it's yeah. it's 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 what i it's it's what gets me up in the morning yeah. for sure yeah percent just that <laughs> just being driven with passion into something that that you know you're going to be excited about uh whether it's it's again either being that artist or organizing this event or prepping for a gig or whatever and like all of the processes and every entity that i that i'm part of they're all still very fun they all kind of coincide with each other um so almost like the same rules apply that's kind of almost how i took like the uh the art of taking photos it was uh oh, yeah. it was more of an instantaneous way of of painting a picture for me is that still a thing that you're i I've, i feel like i've lacked on photos and more in the videography portion okay but more also more embedded in the editing process because that's the same as making beats it's your structuring on you know the grid and like how things are play out like a storyboard yeah um so i've been on that kick more and with any promo or, or media with any any group or anything that i've done that um that needs that that's like where i really shine on that level um i think though that one the organizing the events and djing are like my my three biggest shines right now is like okay let's go to work how does this look how do we make it different from the last or what uh editing technique am i going to use it's different or can i um uh, make smoother animations uh with my words or wow. these these graphics okay. and these things like that yeah cool. all of that that's like that's like the fun part yeah it's like all right man but i dread it for a while um because i'm like man dude this is gonna take so long but the more i sit on it and i procrastinate i don't I started to realize that I'm actually planning the story in my head. So when I go and produce the thing, I already know where everything goes. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. It's just about actually taking the footage and, and taking out these parts. Cause I remember what was being shot or, um, or maybe if I'm using another videographer's footage and we come together and collab and I'm just the one editing. I remember the moments that he caught cause I've, I've seen him already so i'm like okay make sure we get this is a good clip right here this is good for this nice so that's what i've i've come to uh figure out is like i've i've grabbed all of this footage i've procrastinated for so long um but yet i'm still on time um but uh, it's all in my head so how do i just (laughs) produce it and get it done (laughs) so So, sabados underscore kc yep uh and what was the other is there a first friday thing too so that's a uh, made mob at first friday first friday's at made mob excuse me and made mob is an apparel company that has been around uh as long as i've been around uh i think that's the beauty of it too it's like remember i said in the beginning like these things that i've that i've seen and that i've met people that i've met yeah i'm now closely working yes, with yes yes and they're they are so you uh, have you have two sabados things a month and a first friday that you're kind of in charge of 
setup wise so it would just be the the, yeah pretty much the one so it'd be first friday and then the second saturday of every month oh okay okay, yes Uh uh-huh so it'd be like now yeah okay so you got a week off in between you're not going into a first friday and then having to do a salos the next morning no no no. and even then looking at it now because this would probably be the first time i ever do both um i just nominated because i've started work really working there I've just nominated myself to do the the graphic the flyers because I love I love making flyers. That's another form of, of painting in a sense. Sure. Um, do you have? Is there a go to uh, software or how? I don't know. I'm anything. I'm on a, uh, this app called Procreate. Okay. And it's it's fairly simple. I mean, I have my my pencil, and oh. I can um, you know pretty much go into it, import fonts, and and these are all the projects and flyers that I've built and you know, various things that I've done over the years okay. that are locked into here. Cool. And, uh, you know. Did you teach yourself how to use yeah, them? Yeah, pretty much. And are you taking images from the web for things? or Sometimes I'll take, like, reference photos. Sometimes if I, um, you know, uh, take my own photos or other people's photos that have allowed me to use them. Um, like, you know, for instance, like maybe this – this one right here is some a photo that somebody took. I blurred it and then I put like the type over it, and this would be my cover art for a set that I did. Um, so that's there's that, and then sometimes it comes to me developing new masks um, and trying to draw those out, but taking a photo reference of a straightforward photo and then going in and layering on top of that um, to to logos or to even creating shirt designs. This is a new one. Uh, it's like all the baby versions of me in the mask. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So things like that, you know, cool. I just kind of pull from, you know, now, whatever. Did you ever, have you had the experience of, uh, okay, this is the project that I'm working on. I need an image. And then you come across one that you took. And you're like, Oh, yeah. this would work perfectly. Exactly. Like I have a little folder for that, that okay. I'm just like, Hey, let me just throw that in later. Cause when it comes to me, like I'm obviously like I'm branded. Right. But at the same time, we have a crap ton of like family photos from before. So those can be implemented as well. I think the last one I used for that one, um, who's not really in our family, but we kind of took the mask from, uh, was a guy named Sangre Chicana. So I played a show at... Um, Sangre Chicana? Uh-huh. Yeah, he was... So that's a girl of Mexican descent born in the States and then blood. <laughs> yeah. That? Like, 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 uh, pretty much like, yeah. Like Chicano blood in a sense. Oh like yeah. Chicano, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, this is what he looked like. He's not a part of our family, but he was, we were given the mask. That's a handsome looking flyer, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And so this was one of the images I took because of the, um, the vibe that Nighthawk brings. It's kind of has like a, like a very like old timey dated you know bunch of uh, ads uh, newspaper ads on the wall and things like that. So I was like, let me take some, let me find something old, and then layer all the info and things like that. So I'm constantly presented with uh, photos that my dad would find or photos that he might take. Uh, maybe these angles, these positions that he's in, I might kind of take a little bit of that, collage it with something else. Um, it just depends. I mean, there's there are things on here that I've like. Um, you know, drawn out, uh, myself. Okay. And, um, there are things on here that I've just kind of like, this is funny. Like I found, uh, uh, taco Naco. If you're familiar mm-hmm. with that restaurant, they had like a, if you, <laughs> if you click on like their orders, their food, like hold it long enough, it turns into like a PNG file. So it's literally like a cutout of, of a nachos. So I was just trying to find like a, like a photo they took, but I could like just add, something else because it's still theirs but i just put my information on it so i just took a photo of myself and put it behind like i was looking at the nachos <laughs> yeah and just nice. like yeah so you try to you tend to i try to try to get a little bit more creative with it yeah. i mean that's Do you need juice for that device Do you need to plug in oh no no you're good you're good, you're good. Oh. i'm listen i'm done with my stuff for, okay. for today so i saw the little, little yeah. battery thing uh-huh. pop up. um here's another one i'll show you this one this is uh my nephew turned one so i kind of uh found this like disney emulator where you put a person's face in there it turns into a disney what, does character. that look like coco melon or, or it's uh uh encanto encanto, encanto okay, yeah okay. so it was first birthday turned oh, him into yeah. a disney character and then everything else that you see the grass balloons the piñata the papel picado like all that i drew all that out 
What? Yeah. And then the back portion is like a stock image of like the Encanto, like the, the scenery. And I just kind of blurred it. Sure. And then everything wow. else I drew out. Yeah. That sounds like so, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in that uh, app. Have you? Oh, 100%. And, and is it one of these deals where you you feel like you know roughly what all the app is capable For of? For sure. Or do you just live in a tiny little corner? No, 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 no. Every, every little like brush to every kind of texture, like there's some that I don't norm- typically use, but I've used once or twice okay. just to see, hey, what can, how can we manipulate this again and again and again and again? You know, to where it's, it's, it's like sampling, you know, yeah. it's like, how do yeah. we make that? Nice. And um, it's newest feature. Uh, it's like, it's like a $10, $20 add on. You can do like animations on there too. So you can kind of draw out these things and then make like an animation, uh, you know, 10 second clip. Um, or you could even record it. It actually saves your process. So you hmm. could export an MP4 of like you making the entire image like all together. Wow. And it'd just do like a time lapse and what you added, what you took out, what you erased. Oh, that would make, that yeah. sounds like uh, it would make good Instagram content. You know what's, thinking about it now with you, I'm just like, I need to start releasing that because people, again, I love doing flyers. So the more flyers I can do, like I'm, I'm game with it because they're, they're, I don't really charge a lot, but a substantial amount i would love to get more flyer from flyers uh uh client work that i could produce and i think that'd be a great way to highlight that just like all right how did you do this um, i don't i so, don't yeah. know what the, the formula is um but you know in my t- uh abundant scrolling moments uh f- few things will catch my eye but but i'm a sucker for a time lapse video yeah uh or if something like just really pops with color that i a mix of things that i haven't seen somewhere else definitely uh outdoor nature like really unique i I, I don't know but it's a lot of that sounds like yeah oh what's this exactly i i send myself uh many uh clips per week so that when uh the kids are if if we you know i don't know at the dinner table or whatever and just like check out this one check out this one check it you know if, if i think it's cool i'll send it to myself definitely just so that yeah it's in a spot where i can find yeah it. you have those uh those reference uh videos so you yep. can go back in yep. and yeah 100 yep. percent. i got a folder of those nice 100 <laughs> percent. um so i'm glad you mentioned uh was it uh steady p you said you went up to while he was yeah uh we crossed paths dink told me about you uh and then just coincidentally you ended up on the bill with cheeto flow yeah or cheeto flow ended up on the bill with you however that works Mm -hmm. and and uh you did uh he did a set with he and styles did a set and then and then you did a set and then you both did another set yes and uh i just so happened to be in the big room and saw you and I, i was you know uh uh, anxious about, I just, I just wanted to introduce myself since sure. we had already talked and schedule this. Sure, sure. But it's like, oh, he's like on the bill tonight. Should I leave him the fuck alone? Or is it cool <laughs> to, and you were very cool. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. That. No, of course, of course, yeah. Um, so that was the supper club. Is that a thing that's gonna be, uh, yeah, happening? And is it, are the three it, of you gonna be the primary folks in it? Or, uh, they actually messed that entire day up. Actually, I think they double booked. So, Freedom Affair was in that big, yeah. that big room, which I actually have a poster on here that I did for Freedom Affair uh, when they did their New Year's uh, party at the Record Bar. Okay, which, which you know, it's all somewhat connected, right? Um, I work at Record Bar with Steady and and Styles and and those guys. Um, so I think Steady wanted to. Not only produce and promote uh, hip hop shows uh, and also book hip hop shows, but he wanted to actually create another, um, you know, segment for for himself. So Supper Club got created at the ship, and um, you know, typically with with uh, up and coming shows that have you know somewhat of a of a following, we we'll, would we'll typically start off in the small room. Um, but then, uh, since you know he's been in the industry for a minute, there's bigger artists that come through his his. Uh, his feed and people that he knows. So he actually, um, this is styles, uh, steady. 
Oh, steady. So Sorry. yeah, so steady will actually take over both rooms and put maybe uh, a traveling DJ in the bigger room with two other DJs, and then he'll have two more DJs in the smaller room. So it becomes like a full scope of you know of DJs just okay. playing a collective of the things. It could be anything. So um, I think he does it bi monthly. Is what it looks like. Uh, this particular booking they double booked so it got left with just a small room and initially i think it was going to be like i think he was actually going to jump jump on the decks uh this time around because he's not normally he i haven't seen him on the deck since i met him um and then he was going to have his buddy he's going to have me and somebody else and then cheeto and styles plus somebody else and once that all kind of got fizzled out he's like all right let's just combine you two and, and you and so I was like, all right, cool, okay cool let's do that so um so yeah for him i think it's it's going to be a bi-monthly thing and okay he'll start kind of piecing things together cool. so yeah cool. um so born in oakland raised in san antonio you said you mentioned sisters what is their is the sibling what's the breakdown of i'm the only boy the oldest i have four sisters shouts out to firstborns yeah four yeah. sisters four sisters i got yeah. three so nice yeah yeah nice there you go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh one i don't really see too much and uh, well they all live in i don't have any family here so everybody lives in san antonio but um for the most part you know um i'm five years apart from the next one which came out of the first relationship and then the second marriage of my mom's uh they had those two sisters so okay uh, so yeah, they're uh, all they're all pretty different. Uh, all, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Uh, what's I, I've been to Austin. I've been to Houston. I don't think I've ever been to San Antonio. I've been to Dallas a couple times. What's, Interesting. What's San Antonio like? Man, some people have different versions of what San Antonio is. I'd say it's like it can be like a, a little Mexico. Um, you know, coming from Texas, it's you know, um, let's see. Uh, my girl at the time when I brought her. Um, she came from the West Coast, okay. so it's a de- you know Mexican co- Chicano culture. Um, Chicano Mexicans are uh, Mexican Americans in yeah. West and California are very different from you the Texas versions. You can't, yeah, you very- can't say Mexican American and not put Cheech and Chong in my head. <laughs> <laughs> like the yeah. little night school and yeah. take Spanish and get a C. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 100 percent. And that's the crazy part. It's like you, that's what you're gonna see. Mexican American wise, uh, on the screen, you'll never see um, Texan Texan based Mexican Americans. Besides, like uh, you know, the closest is like when you ding you ding talked about like La Bamba, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. Los Lobos or whatever, or like Selena. Like yeah. these are Mexican Americans that come from Texas themselves, and like how a lot of them didn't grow up speaking Spanish, and you know, it's like more Mexican than American, more more Mexican than Mexicans, more American than American. The whole <laughs> that whole that whole thing that's completely. Is there gonna be true, a test yeah. on that later? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like when I brought her down, she was just like, I don't understand. It's like you guys are so close to the border, but yet everybody, most majority of everybody here doesn't speak Spanish. And I was like, true, but I, there's still like a good plethora of Mexicanos that are from the motherland. It's just the ones that were born here. Like we don't really set, we didn't grow up celebrating Mexican culture. So a lot of the stuff that I learned Mexican culture wise, I learned from Dink because we didn't grow up in that format. Recently like, in life. Then. Yeah. Recently in life. Okay. Like we didn't celebrate Dia de los Muertos. We didn't celebrate the, the, uh, uh, the Ninos or none of those little Mexican little, none of that. Okay. We, we were just straight like, christmas thanksgiving like the whole nine okay. and it was very just texas yeah. like i don't know like it's hard to, like texas it's its own country yeah, really right. i mean it just it's it texas loves texas yep. and, and that's just what it is yeah. so we celebrated the city of san antonio is what it is san antonio culture um really celebrates like the uh the you know like uh for instance we have like a two-week um party called fiesta and it's it's celebrating San Antonio, so you'll see a lot of uh, the parades, or you'll see a lot of the uh, uh, like the the violence and though, stuff. Right? It's a big city, right? Yeah, it's it's decently big. I would say it's a little bit bigger than here. Yeah, okay, for sure. But yeah, Houston's the big one, right? Yeah, Houston's, Houston's the big. I think Houston and Dallas are like neck and neck. Okay, okay. And then Austin, of course, is is definitely skyrocketed into something that's like 
yeah. not Texas. <laughs> I yeah. feel like, yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's very weird. Like, everybody's moving to Austin. Yeah. Or or Dallas is what I hear. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, we're right in the middle. You know, it definitely gets hot. Um, it's, you know, it's its its, its own city, too. Like, sure. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, how do you know how uh, mom and dad met? Your mom and dad? They met at a car show, I believe. Uh, really? Yeah. My dad was... Oh, what was that? What was that uh, wave? There was a. My mom really enjoyed wrestling. Okay. Yeah. So we we got a chance to talk about the Iron Claw movie and like the Von Erichs and stuff. She's like a lot of those matches I was at, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like she goes, no, like I had the love for wrestling, and then uh, she, my mom was like super young. I think she was like seventeen, eighteen. My dad was at the time was like twenty something. Okay. So they had met and. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it was a car show that led to the wrestling. Then they were dating for for that thing. So she was like all hyped How do on. You, it. I mean, when you I, I you say car show, I picture thousands of people. Like, yeah very how did they right uh <laughs> i it's i've never been asked this so i uh i'm trying to figure out like in a booth and one of them's a so, attendee. Some, something along those lines huh. where they ran in or to each other or i don't know what but i i remember my dad was uh highlighting his vehicle which wasn't anything spect- it wasn't a low rider or anything it was sure. just a hatchback that was <laughs> you know like decked out and all red and things like that and, and shag and things like that so um, I just remember them meeting there, and then I think shortly after they had gotten married, uh, he uh, uh, got stationed. We got stationed in Oakland or San Diego around that time. Armed forces and, and, uh, and the Navy, yeah, the Navy, Navy. Okay. Uh, Navy reserves, yeah. Um, and at one point in that time in his travel, uh, which is ironically funny, that he uh, aborted the um, uh, uh, what is it, the USS Kansas City something something or whatever. Like that was one of the ships he was on, oh, wow. and then there was one for New Jersey that he was on as well. So like, interesting. It's so funny how it comes full yeah, circle. Yeah. I even have like a shirt that has like a, it's blue and it says it has like a golden KC on it. That that. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice. So it's almost like it was like, yeah, destined in a sense. Um, it's like your uh, uh, the people that you met that you now closely work with. Exactly. You know? it's, it's <laughs> Things like, just keep coming like full circle. Yeah. Like uh, even just thinking about like what was rooted like. I had always been into um, creating things on the computer or drawing and how it pertains now is like it all started one way or another. Pencil. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so how, they're they're together for how long? Um, man, they were together for a minute. I think they divorced when I was like seven, seven, okay. eight. Okay. Yeah, around that time, around like, or no, no, probably later. I would say, was this seven, eight? I like it the end of fifth grade so probably like 10 okay nine or ten so you, yeah were they putting on music to listen to in the home that you can recall 100 percent. okay 100 were they, they were they were equally my dad was uh all latino hip-hop pioneers it was all soul um all old school hip-hop Hence um, the, the, mm, the the red car with the shag yep all that all the oldies yeah. all these things i mean to the point where uh i still have it it's a lowrider magazine with a dedication um, when he was, uh, uh, you know, traveling on, on, on the ship and, um, he had submitted, you know, Hey, to my wife, Liz and my baby, my baby boy, Frankie and these different things. And so I was, Oh shoot, I, I have this, I have cool. this now. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he's all, all into that. All and what about mom? Mom was more into, um, she had like, uh, like doo-wop and country and like cumbia music and, uh, uh some of the some of the hip hop nothing nothing too too versed in hip hop uh i think it was more of like the uh like uh like freestyle almost okay. i think that's kind of like her where she kind of put her her mark on that nice. so um yeah so i got a little bit from from both okay. and equally very much appreciated um i didn't really grow up on any like um classic rock unless it was like with an uncle or or somebody and then you know there's then there's Tahano music as well so sure. that was like very prominent in in Texas of course and um yeah I mean they showed me really everything cool. um so I didn't you, you're uh way later in life you begin a vinyl collection yeah but uh, 
not necessarily pertaining to your list and not necessarily referencing stuff that mom and dad might have owned, was there an album that you first fell in love with or maybe bought with your own money or anything that uh, a buddy or somebody had that stands out as something that really like keyed you into, oh, this is what the final product looks like when you're a recording artist? Man, um, that's a good question. Um, I think at the time when I was searching, I was searching for just things that I uh, was maybe familiar with. I remember one of the first albums I bought was uh, uh, the soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever. Ooh. Yeah, on, right. on vinyl. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, um, you know, you know what, I mean, I can sort of, what stuff looks like when it yeah. when it's you know there's uh, yeah uh, like when I clapped yeah to before we started because mm-hmm. I gotta I gotta line up and when I start the editing I gotta line up audio audio and audio yeah of course so that it's otherwise nothing matches you sure know? yeah um it's a good thing so to clap. There, there's yeah. a lot of uh, uh, TikToks where what you're seeing are sound waves yeah and it's like this track is the bass and this track is the uh, drums and this track is yep, the whatever. stems the stems the, okay there you the go. Stems. Yep, stems uh the one for uh there's one for night fever nice uh, yo like <laughs> I, I i got you the beat well so uh my folks five six somewhere seven somewhere in there was when they split so like very uh few um you know core memories associated with music but the Bee Gees were in there man mm-hmm. like i just i don't know i don't know anything about music but i know that i like the, the way that this the, sounds yeah. oh 100 this, this these these riffs and these vocals man. those oh, are yeah. dudes you know oh, yeah um but i didn't ever stop to think about like the level of talent and ability that they had as recording artists yeah Oh, and so to sure. see the stems for all, you know, and just like man, dude, I this is like, gold. These dudes were slaying. You oh know my- what? And it will be, I'm gonna remind me later, but uh, and it's obviously obviously on this recording. There's a there's a video clip of these these kids. They're from I think they're from India. Okay, and they have dressed up like the Bee Gees, and the beard and the whole, and they're like ten. White, maybe maybe even suits. younger. I'm the whole nine, and they're singing exactly like the Bee Gees. It's incredible, and I, I forgot what song they're singing. Um, but you just can't stop watching. Yes. You're like, wow, this yeah. is like um, this is spot on. There's another one. Um, gosh, it's um, I can't remember if it's a De La Soul or a Tribe track. Um, I think it's De La Soul. Um, and so you, there's stems for all of the samples mm-hmm. and one of them is like uh the whistling from sitting on the dock of the bay by yeah. otis redding mm-hmm. you know and, and the the riff is like ding 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 it might be me myself and i uh, anyway uh and just and, and so okay you just you they've they've like to your point the tiniest little piece of otis Res- redding whistling and then they chop it up here and, and maybe tweak it here and mm. then boop yeah and it's like i've heard that song four hundred thousand times <laughs> and i never made the connection never and it's like the bass riff is like from a steely dan tune or something yeah just like yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, I, just, I really want to yeah. like go outside and, and be like do you realize how much work goes into oh, i know you're sure. taking other people's things but holy smokes 100 have you ever have you ever looked at the site uh is which is a big help in producer and a lot of producers, just for reference, but have you ever visited Who Sampled? No. So Who Sampled will literally is like a library of these of these songs that it'll tell you where it was sampled in or who sampled it. Okay. And it'll give you a YouTube clip, and it, it'll give you the comparison, and it'll check mark check it. At this time, this is when they use this melody okay. or they use this scratch okay. sample, and it'll play both of them for Are you. Are you following uh, Tick to the Talk? Uh wait wait what? <laughs> it's a it's an Instagram handle tick to the talk. No, uh. Uh-uh. All right, it's this black dude who is he's got a studio and his you know, camera set and, uh-huh. and he starts. Where this from? And he'll 
like he's got a guitar, a bass, keys. He's got a, a, a and he'll play drum, it, and he'll he'll do all the parts. And there's uh, little circles that look like records. Wow. And so if he starts with the bass riff, uh, and he's got you know some piece of equipment that's got buttons and pads, and when uh -huh. he, when he touches those, it feels like it's it's recording that particular. T yep. Anyway, so he'll do the bass, and then this first circle fills. And then he picks up a guitar and he. Does oh yeah, the uh, it's like a uh, like a live sequencer almost. Like he records every part in. It's almost like a Mark Rebe, like when he records every every to build it on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. I'm yeah. like, how yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you learn how to do? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and he's it's not, insane to I mean, see some of the some of the guitar. And now he's got a this horn thing mm. that I've never seen before. It's like uh, some digital technological version of a sax okay he explains it in one of his videos and i already forgot super it, dope super dope yeah like yeah. just seeing you know everything that goes into one track yeah anyway oh yeah it's a lot there was a uh there's one more comparison i'm gonna have to find this video too but it was like was it david uh goal g-o-h-o i think he did something with um, not very Foo well fighters based. dave grohl yes nirvana yes yeah he um, was talking to Pharrell about these drum licks that was in Nirvana and where he got that from, and he was he was doing these because it uh, uh, there's that section where he's like T -t 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 -t. yeah okay. yes I might have seen this yes so he had said that he had gotten a lot of those drum licks from like uh, the Daz Band or the Gap Band the Gap Band yes okay. yeah and they showed the comparison which in there, is like, uh, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that was no. Uh, that's average, average white, band. white, average white band. My yeah, bad. Gap Band is like outstanding and like uh, Ooh, those. Yeah, that's a great track. Yep, yeah. and there was it, I don't know, I don't think it was outstanding, but it was another song, and they'd had that same drum like He's like, so in in the songs that we were making, I was actually taking these references from soul tracks and these drums that would influence into what we were doing, and and. I think at the end the video, like Pharrell was like, "What? Like, <laughs> I never knew." Because you know, it's like you don't know. Yeah. Like, you're just making yeah. this music, but when you really break it down and figure out what people's inspiration is, yeah. or you know, these these influences, it's like, wow, dude. It's I've, I've brought this up a million times, but it's I love it so much that I can't stop. Um, Chicago uh, and Al Green. It's my dad's favorite. This is a, this one's been going around f for a long time now, and mm -hmm. every time I come across it, I, I have to watch. So Chicago is like seven piece band, maybe. Yep. Um, and they're in. It's it's grainy footage, but it's it's still good. They're uh, they're in a studio uh, somewhere, and they're. They're record. They're just jamming to um, Al Green's. Um, I'm so tired of being alone, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. Tired. What is that? Uh, uh, wow. I know what song that is. Okay. The, the, and, the title. And, yeah. And Al Green is also at, in this building, but I think down the hall or across the way do, recording his own thing. Yeah. And he comes out and he walks past and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And so he comes in and he's like, hey, guys, uh, you, you're doing my, my number. And they're like, holy shit, it's Al Green. And he's like, <laughs> do you mind if we just do it together and grabs the mic and they're like, yeah, that would be awesome. Hell yeah. And so they start and, and the camera goes from drummer to bass to horn player to, and every single one of them is like, <laughs> living we're, we're shit. like just <laughs> holy shit we're jamming without green. Yeah, it's hell so yeah. cool. Man. I would have, I would have been the same way, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, Okay, so what about uh, live music when you're a young person? Did did your folks go see live music? Did you ever go see stuff with buddies? I didn't. No? Honestly, no. I think uh, I, live music in general, uh, I don't know. I don't really have any story. Like from my parents, I don't remember too many stories that they have went to go see somebody, unless it was like a Tejano band or – right. It maybe if somebody came into town, like I know, like the two stories I have is like uh, when my dad met Kit Frost and how much of an asshole he was. Oh, damn. Yeah. And then the other one was um, running into KRS one in Ooh. San Francisco because okay. he cut him off in traffic. <laughs> yeah. And like he, 
I guess KRS one pulled over and he's like, "Hey, my bad," and then drove off. Oh, and cool. My dad was like, "What the fuck just happened here?" That, like <laughs> that cancels out the assholery yeah. from Kid Frost. Right, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, I'm. I know if if I maybe I've just never asked or deep dived, but yeah, that I don't know. We we didn't really have. Um, uh musicians per se like in our family and like i mean my grandma sang sure. my, my dad my uh grandpa played uh guitar um you know slightly you know uh, maybe in his older days um i think the only portion of musical the musical portion comes from the lucha lords themselves so my uncle who took on the mask from sangre he was actually in, in a band called los angeles negros or no i'm sorry that's who he sounded like he sounded like the main singer from los angeles negros but he had his own band uh that i was actually re- able to require his original 45s from uh this and then is dad this is uh my dad's uncle so dad's th- uncle. Okay. this would be lemos one the first person who started the mass journey is that who is in your bio is uh Le- that's lemos dos oh. that would be my dad oh okay. yeah, yeah yeah okay but my dad has wasn't really like a uh, musician or any anything sure. of any sorts um uh lemos jr which is lemos one son uh is in a metal band and so he like you see him saying there's like this music and this wrestling that was always paired up for me i'm just uh no wrestling but do this with more of a, a musical element. Yeah. My dad was just more of like the wrestling uh, and then music appreciation kind of thing. So it always kind of flowed within, but no, sure. nobody was really like around me performing and like in the household or anything. It was just what I was hearing at the time. So, so you have this uh, uh, gift of, of creating beats and, and producing, but you also, uh, DJ, so you're you're performing live for folks. Yeah. Um, were there early DJ show like where did that? Were you like I want to do that? Man. You know, I I want to say like maybe anything that that my dad just showed me like okay. off the riff music videos or anything that he might have cool. uh, you know um, maybe just kind of snuck in my brain. I don't I. It's funny that you asked that because I always just try to remember, like, man, where? Because I specifically remember this one time they'd sent my uncle to pick me up to take me to school. Uh, never really been in my house or anything like that, but you know, knocks on the door. I'm, I'm almost done getting ready, and I remember I had my laptop and like a virtual DJ software open up, and I was starting to kind of mess with these 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 um, files. I think one of them was like. Planet Rock by African Bombada. Oh. Yeah. So I kept messing with that track uh, and just like the way it started or where these cue points or trying to mesh a song with another song. Like I remember that. Anything besides that, that was like, I don't know, when I was like in 12th, in uh, uh, seventh grade. Okay. I don't really remember anything else that I, that had to, per, that, you know, pertain to music playing or, or, uh, or, uh, you know, DJ wise, you know, not really any any of that. I think it was it was until I got to high school uh, when I when I met my boy Zerk and he started to get into beats and rapping and DJ stuff and so that was introduced like w- very later on um, at freshman year of high school and then when it became its its second intro was when I got here. Okay, so I knew it was always there and I knew the influence was there from just hip hop itself. Yeah. But what nothing What you said 2013 you you come here? For... 20 uh the end of 2012. So 2012. August 20, 2012, okay. yeah. Now um a number of times in 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 talking to folks um I have realized for myself and I think that uh, a time or two it's happened with the person on the other side of the table too when you have been around as long as I have and you know like there's feelings associated with events in your life or decisions that you made or whatever. But, uh, at some point I arrived at this place where I can just kind of visualize yeah. all the kind of key points in my life. And instead of being like, I wish that had gone a different way or upset or that well, life's not fair or whatever. It's like, but I really enjoy who I am and where I am now. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably not, 
this person in this place in this space without all those things. Yep. So do you is Casey does does Casey feel like home for you? Or are you oh for sure glad that you yeah just, okay yeah I've built myself here. Cool. I've, yeah. I've, I've I've I'm a firm believer in and um uh throwing throwing me into the pit into whatever it is. It, it sounds yeah. like you've thrived in that almost. Hundred percent. Yeah, because I was I was thrown into the pit just being here from the jump. Um, I, 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 yeah, I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything. And I really felt like at a point in time, like family had really turned on me. Like I couldn't return or I felt like I just didn't, um, yeah, just, I just was lost. Um, and I had to like retrain and reorganize and rethink a lot of the things I was doing that I was carrying from, from there to here. Um, whether it's me just going, you know, through all this trauma and being like a machismo kind of guy, um, or, you know, uh, different habits of, you know, I don't know, uh, cleaning in some sorts, like these things that I was already doing in a day to day basis, I had to like, get out of that shell and get into something that was, uh, you know, healthier habits and, and, um, you know, uh, realizing the, the effects of, um, uh, uh you know, uh, alcoholism and things like that. And, um, all these different things that played, Real talk, man. yeah, Real all, talk. all of that itself, I had to really shut off. And I will always say this at any, at any point, like I gave full props to the woman that I was with at the time. We were together for five years and she really took on like all of that. Um, Just and it held your baggage for you for a little man. while. And, and she came, go walk around without this for a second and come man. back. <laughs> I, I only wish that, um, and I, I don't necessarily wish, but at the time, like, I had so much that she was not prepared for any of that. She didn't come from that. She came from a little bit more of a of a better household. And so all sure. of that was, like, completely new. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I learned from all of it. I became a better me. I dug into the things that I wanted to dig in. Sure. I erased the, the fear of these things and, um, you know, went to, through some really dark times um and and kept like reinventing and and turning the wheel um and keeping that that um mentality of like how are we breaking this cycle you know um uh, a lot of my family expected me to go back home and just work here and live here and do this it was already it's kind of structured within their brains to do a b and c but i knew i was i, I knew i was always like the black sheep of the of the family oh really okay. yeah like i didn't feel like i necessarily belonged um, you know, with like some of these family members or we didn't connect or I was looked at like as an outcast in some sort and, and you know, based on like the things I'd done when I was a kid or um, just little things. And maybe a lot of it could have been in my head, but it was just a feeling you get from, from being around certain pieces of your family. It's like, man, like I'm just trying to do me, you know, or I like what I like. Um, and so in being here, uh, you know, I struggled with like going back home and like, really breaking down is like man should i move back should i stay like i don't understand like Heavy. and yeah and it got to the point to where my, my boy would make fun of me he's like dude i'm gonna drop you off but are you gonna cry again <laughs> like, i'm like look bro like i'm that's, sorry like that's how the yeah uh, the the shack episode of the pivot opens <laughs> they ask him one question he's like not even sitting down yet and he's like like god damn you're gonna make me cry all right and apparently i don't know yet but apparently he cries a bunch in this and okay I'm like, Got you, yeah. Because yeah. real feelings. Yeah, it's real feelings. I mean, I I really battled the the um the idea of moving just because I felt like a lot of people had genuinely missed me. A lot of people oh, were good. were like, hey, like, man, we're we see you doing your thing. Like, are you coming back or don't forget about you know these different things. So I really felt like the love, um, but I also felt like uh the relationship that I, I kept with my friend. Um, and all the all these relationships that he had built, I was every time I went back, I would just fall into this this world of his, and it would introduce me to more and more people, and I'd get more excited about um, DJing and producing and all these different things. So it really kept my momentum going on on like my own things and what I was doing here. Um, and so I think it just got to the point. Uh, I don't know when I made that final call. I want to say before my last relationship. I was really, ha I had it in my head, like, I'm moving back. Like, I'm going oh, back. Shit, okay. Like, I'm gone. Um, and, I mean, 
like 2015-ish, 20... <sighs> no, what was that, like 20... Probably like the end of 2018. 2018, okay. Yeah, I, I was like, hey, like, I'm going to, you know, but I met my my uh, my lady at the time, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it was between that and other instances that every time where I, I had that thought, something would just pop up that was just new to my world. Just put you right back on your track. Yes, but it fit. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not supposed to leave here, you know? And it just kind of kept bad. going. I was like, all right, well, here I am. Yeah. Um. So I just, I don't know. I just kind of stuck to it. And and now I can say like, you know, I'm I'm proud I live here. I'm, I'm proud that I can go somewhere and somebody gives me props from some time that they met me or sure. some recognition sure. somewhere. Um, I'm proud that people like know the mask. I'm I'm even more proud that I introduced that I've I've built stronger relationships with my family members because I've learned so much out of that world that I can come back and I'm almost treated like you're a more like, whole person. Yeah, you can engage. Like, I have I have I'm a little bit wiser. I have a little bit of um, uh, a therapeutic, you know tone with me when i'm dealing with family members because they're like it's well it's you know what i'm saying it's yeah. it's new things that they're going through but it's like hey like let me tell you about this and how this works um you know my mom always wants me to play like the dad and the brother towards my sisters because their dad's not available um but i'm like look i can't play that role but all i can do for you is tell you like that the things that you're doing are normal you're just growing here's 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 where it goes sour but here's where it can go right and I'll give him that perspective. Well, it's it makes a perfect sense that she would want that for them. 100%. But if you do that, then it jacks up your th- yeah. thing with them. Yeah, I don't I don't need to be like, "Oh, well you shouldn't wear that and you shouldn't do that." I'm not that yeah. guy. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not supposed to be in that role. I'm I'm your supportive male figure brother. I'm still with open arms and whatever I built here, if it's your getaway to come here, I'm glad that I can provide a, a a certain amount a, a greater amount of now of yeah. resources of of things to go and do a list of things like people to see people to meet um even people that are connected to me that has that have uh, multiple other resources if they decide to move here they want to just stay for a bit like i've built that so it's like this welcome to my world yeah. here like you're invited yeah. like if you ever want to make that leap my, my boy who just left um, a couple days ago He's he's making his move here, okay. Because he is c- backed up into a corner where he's like, I'm not getting what I want here. Like I've been to KC, I've been I've experienced love my first time there. They loved my set. They have a community there for me. They have this for me. Like, and I make sure like every time somebody comes over here, they have a gig to play. They have somewhere to make a little bit of money. You know, to cover you a do? little bit of expense. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Why not? You know what I'm saying? I'm so invested into, into these places that I do call home, like the ship, that, hey, le- I'm, we're collectively, because uh, I run uh, with the DJ crew over there, um, and these are friends from high school and other friends that we met, but um, we all play different styles. There's All these styles have a little bit of a, of a different community in, in each pocket of, in Kansas City. So I could put you here, put you there. And that's where the organizing comes through. Hey. And it's like, I've created Sabalos. Why don't you open up at Sabalos? Or oh, yeah. I've done another podcast where he's, you know, um, uh, the homie was, was looking just to be more vocal and be a, become a host. So I was like, hey, you want to host Sabalos? So now it becomes, I start to really use the platforms and the resources to bring these people cool. that I love, that Very I already cool. know, that it's like, hey, let me, you know, because you come here or you deal with what I did and it's like, you're trying to like inch your way yeah. and make these connections and people don't know. And it's a grind. Man. It's a grind. So let me like take a little bit of that burden and come, come. And it's, there's never like, you're not like, Oh, I'm going to do this for 14 months, three weeks and two days. Nah, you just g- nah. grind it, yeah. man. Grind, just grind it. What, whatever, you know, it's, there's a lot of unknown, which can feel daunting. hundred percent, hundred percent. And especially, you know, you're, you want to experience um, these things when you're um, whatever your field is. You know, it, it, you either have to know somebody, you have to go and search for it, or these different things. So let me just make it easier on you. 
and and let me organize something with with my resources and make it happen. We've, yeah. I've had the entire crew come down of ten. We get an Airbnb for them. I booked them three shows the first run, five shows the next run. That five show one, they I tired them out. Like <laughs> I didn't give them. I literally didn't give them any chance to walk around, go enjoy the city. They were like back to back gigs, and and they were cool with it. But in the same sense, it's like okay, all all that did was show that I could do it. <laughs> it didn't really like like it benefited them in that way but it was just tiring i was like yeah. dude this is yeah. this is a lot and yeah. kansas city's not that big so you're promoting five shows in the span of three days i mean how much you know you can only go so far yeah. so yeah um so yeah like casey is is definitely my home but i still move with san antonio intentions and okay. when i say that is sabalos is like a like a image of what san antonio is in in my world like what i've experienced as a kid going to the markets the flea markets and things like that and though it's not like the you know the the mexican lady on the corner selling her goods it's it's more of a modern version of it um the best way i i know in my world and um i've just added more to it and uh i try to bring that vibe um but i've always carried san antonio on my sleeve anybody who knows me knows that I have my family. That's where I come from. That's sure. all the all of that. Um, and what I love about it so much, uh, on just on even just that level, and having this San Antonio KC connection, is that um, once I showed my dad Instagram and showed like the photos and things like that, and even posting his old photos, he got his own Instagram, and now he's out in public with people my age, people his age, wearing the mask in public. Uh uh Yep. Wrestling, um, getting into the, all these other spaces, booking his events more. And he's still, he's like 57, 58, you know, yep. been in the game for a minute and still just moving. Okay. And you see him everywhere. So it's like, it's like we're really at this like together. Like cool. we're, we're in this, people know you, they know, uh, they know your son. People know me, they know my dad, they yeah. follow my dad, you know. Um, so I don't know, like I'm, I'm here, you yeah, know what I'm saying? I'm like I'm here, here man. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you. I'm glad we crossed paths and hundred percent crossed paths with Dink. Likewise. Um, so, uh, I wasn't sure necessarily how, uh, addressing the mask would be, but you've brought it up a bunch of times. So now I feel comfortable. Sure. Um, how, how long have you had it? This, or, or I'm, you have more than one. I did. I do. I do. And I did. Um, okay. I sent, uh, initially, it was just a mask that my dad didn't want. He didn't like the design, plus it didn't fit him. It was too big. Um, oh, so, interesting. So my dad has a smaller one. This is this is the secondary one, but the first one was more of a... I miss that mask so much, but it was... <laughs> yeah. It, this I is bet. Yeah, this is like a, a version of it, but not quite. So the original one had like full chrome silver, and it was very shiny. And it had like more of a of a grid on it, like okay. just, just okay. a straight grid, and then a red stripe with like this crazy like jagged in in depth design or something like that, um, with with strings on the back. Oh, um, so I put it on, and I was like, oh man, this fits uh, because anything he had given me was just too you know too small. And at the time when I was trying to figure out like how to move as a producer, like the band the the brand itself, I think it was going by like frank one or something like that like just my real name and one sure. um and just tackling on you know just just that itself i rolled with that and then um fk menace came from like the menace portion came from a sub name so it's uh my dad goes by lemos dos the menace from east la and apparently like you know just kind of like in that world there's like it's it's a whole new identity so it's not necessarily like some people do it like specifically where they're from but like in other regards like when somebody wants to like i think my dad explained it like when mexican wrestlers wanted to have like a different persona they would create an entirely different place where they're from the image the whole nine well, yeah yeah so yeah. like i think like song liberty Chica. with your story right whatever you want exactly um so he he had chosen that uh and then i took like the menace portion then then um, uh, abbreviated Frank into FK, and yeah. that's kind of how it, but it also plays off of MF Doom. So FK yeah. means MF Doom. Yeah. yeah. So that still has that homage and all that yeah. embedded into that. Um, and then uh, just um, 
just that itself plus the mask i was like okay boom i have something now um when the mask got like really worn and really like i mean you throw it in a bag or you throw it somewhere you're i'm sweating in it for during sabados because i'm wearing it the entire event um it starts to deteriorate you know uh the chrome turns into like dirt black you know you can't even really see the grid the the you know this one is starting to do this and i'm like <laughs> i'm Di- like man i need another one bit. uh yeah it's did like did you find that one was it given to you did you create it so um the first one i don't know who created that one we used to use ray mysterio's mask maker back in the day um for and, real yeah his name was sergio he was um, from tijuana and he did like at least 50 lucha Lotus wrestlers like all their <coughs> all their masks and um he my dad had moved on to to some more local people so one of i think this the last one was from some guy in houston had made it he didn't like it gave it to me i wore it for a while when it started to deteriorate i hit up my cousin who still wrestles um he should be like 38 some lemons junior um his mask maker is like why wouldn't i reach out to his mask maker like um he has clean masks you know my dad became very intricate with his more colors um more different different styles aztec calendar the whole nine (laughs) um my cousin kept it more of like a uh in his like metal band role oh yeah so like there was a lot more like jagged uh you know uh designs up top or like the, the color split three ways um, just I'm, different I'm things. I'm starting to picture yep. uh, goalie masks, NHL. Uh, not not that far. Well, not but that far. That's but yeah, a like huge, huge. Yeah. That like if you uh, your first team, mm-hmm. right? You, having your mask, the design piece. Oh done yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Is yeah. There and then if you get traded, mm. you're starting over, and it's always like a big reveal whenever the yes. the and their artwork. I even mean, thought about it like is, that. Yeah. Flipping bananas. Okay. Like, yo. Yeah. I mean, anyway. I'd yeah. Cut you off. No, no, no. You're good. Um, that's good to know, though. I didn't even make that uh, correlation, but uh, yeah. Uh, it it's funny because it goes goes right back to Dink. We had the uh, this logo I'd created. I don't know if it's still on here, but uh, we had this logo they created, and it was uh, pretty much my face masked up, and I had basically took. Um, this, the same thing, the grid, the red, and I didn't really know like how a logo was created or like the terminology, like, like vectoring a logo, like how a logo is made. It's like, you know, a vector is like, no matter what size, it's not going to distort, Okay. you know, and very like sharp edges, like a picture that was turned into like, uh, a digital image, black and white is not a logo. Like mm. you need like. Let's just say, like, if you're trying to um, screen press, you know, you have all these jagged little black dots within the thing. Like, no, every line has to be just, like, cookie cutter. Um, So I told him, I said, hey, man, like, I'm looking to make, um, you know, a new mask. And I said, uh, you know, I kind of, or new logo, but also new mask as well. But my logo, I want it to just kind of be like this. He's like, all right, well, give it to me. Like, let me see what I can do. So what he did was, um, I don't think it's in here, but when when he um, he took the side, you know, it's like a it's like this, like a three quarter. Uh huh. And so basically, what he did was when he vectored it, he made like all of this side like disappear, like in in a, more of a, a like a shadow, basically. So you know, more light on this side, more shadow on this side. And what he really did was he almost created this split mask, right? So the shadow looks like this, right? If I'm looking at it correctly, the silver part would show, and this would be the grid, and this would be just the black portion of it. Okay. When I looked at that, I was like, this looks like a then and now, because we started with black and red, and then I'm the uh, chrome with red. So it's almost like plays off of that. And I was like, I didn't realize that, like, it took me, you know, Weeks, months later, I was like, oh, man, he really created like a, I was like, what if I make that mask? I was like, I wonder if I can take that and put this here. So I the the main obstacle was finding that exact texture because some guy at Houston made it. So I was like, hit up my cousin. Hey, can you can your mask maker find this chrome texture with the grid, whatever? Looked for, I don't know, weeks. 
could not find it. I was like, man. Okay, I was like, let's just go with um, regular silver. Why not? So we did the regular silver and then the black, and this is how this one became to be. Okay. I did a big review on it. Um, cool. And uh, you know, I did it to where um, I did like a video. I looked in the camera, and then I went down, took it off, you know, with the un- old one underneath, new one on top. Oh, cool. And I just nice. ripped it off. Yeah. Nice. So now I have like different plays on how I'm going to reveal the next one. Um, it's in the works. Yeah. Well, the, that it's funny. The gold one that you just saw, yeah. um, that's like the one I'm trying to. Okay. Because uh, I'll be 30 at the end of May. So they say it's like your golden year. Yeah. We started off with gold and black. So I never felt like I was worthy Oh, to man. hit the go- the golden black mask. Okay. I was always going to stick with like the sure. the baby red, yeah. you know, starter so, um, so no origin s- story. 94 no significance. Uh 94 year is born, but I didn't add the 94 dink add the the 94 on the logo. He did that himself. The FK in back, oh, I, I didn't know, I didn't see that. Yep, okay. there's a there's a FK right Oh, there. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I maybe I did see it. Yeah. Didn't add that either. My cousin added that. Okay. Um I just left it. Sure. I said, all right, if this is what you want to add, um, I don't really have any direction on where I want to go with these masks, um, literally at all. So I took what, whatever Dink had put on and it was like, just resemble it, you know, make this mask the way it looks. And they took what it had and they're like, you don't want any strings or nothing? Because I just said, I wanted the strap, nothing in back. And they're like, man, we got to have something in back. And so when he sent it to me, when I got it, that's when I saw the FK on it. They didn't even tell me. They didn't do anything. So I was, like, I was like, all right, I'm rolling with it. Like, okay. what am I going to do? It fits. It's so it smells great. Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've talked uh, about new mask and new mask reveal. You've talked about missing an old mask. You've talked about this one deteriorating. Yes. And you've talked about sweating all day and sab- at Sabados. <laughs> and you've also talked uh, about cleaning and ADHD. Yeah. So I got to believe that. At some point in your day or your week or whatever, you're giving that thing some TLC. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, it usually. I know, I know my stocking caps yeah. start to stink a little bit. You know, it's it's inevitable, man. I feel like uh, every show, I'm going to drink tequila. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to drink something uh, pretty heavy and, and very sloppy because I'm like dancing and moving and DJing all at the same time. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, you better believe that this is getting like the root of, of well, the yeah, drink first. <laughs> exactly, it, man. Every time, so that mixed with the sweating, it's it comes a time when you're like you feel like you smell, you smell, but it's, but it's really just this. So and, what? We turn it inside out and give it a so spray or what? Here, here's what I found out. I asked my dad. I said, Dad, like. How do you how do you clean your mask? Like what's that what's that entail? Like are you you throwing it in the wash? Are you just hand washing? Like that's you know, it's a that's a well, one that's exactly like you're like, oh like I don't want to mess this up. He, oh, you just Febreze it. I said, For real? And he goes, Yeah, yeah, just Febreze it down and then and I started to think, I was like, that only works for him because he has multiple. He doesn't wear the same one in and out, day in, day Good out. Insight. Yes. That matters. So I was like, uh, and funny enough, he gave me a couple masks or tried to, and I was like, and he had them in a plastic bag. I said, Dad, these these masks reek, bro. Like, you didn't spray these at all. So I found a method. You need to tweak your Febreze <laughs> recipe a little yeah. bit. Put something else in there. Like, <laughs> you got some was, It was not working at all. Um, so I, I, I think I just said, um, if I could just hand wash it carefully. Yeah. Let's do that. So what I did was I took a, I take those pods mm-hmm. and I get like this pan or bowl of some sort and I just pop the pod on all every level that it has because it has like the the soap and then there's like a fabric and you know everything that's in that pod I just pop them all and then drop it in there throw away the plastic and I fill up the the water uh, like cold water and then I just like rub it out like on all, all everywhere where it's like could smell yeah like i just hand wash it uh i'll let it sit for like i don't know like i think the most i've left it there to sit it's like five hours and then i'll take it out and then like squeeze everything out of it and then um i'll put it between a towel and like a, a stack of books on top of it to to soak it out and then when it's done i'll put it in front of the fan or the window and let it air dry that way 
and this part you can see right here it's white uh-huh it'll come out pearly white again nice you won't see any sweat stains or anything like that yeah. and then it, oh, it smells fresh hell like yeah out the, yep yep and so i'm pretty sure i have like two more gigs off of this and then it needs to be washed yeah okay yeah okay. <laughs> two yeah, more yeah, gigs yeah, yeah. you start to smell it you're like oh i don't know yeah, dude you already? gotta yeah bro and like do that last time, yeah it <laughs> don't and it doesn't it doesn't help i don't know what girls smell but when they hug me or they try to like maybe throw a kiss on the cheek or something like that you know they just I don't know what they smell, so I need to like make sure that it's like top notch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I know yeah. I I like to I'm clean. I like to smell good. My mask gotta smell good too. For so, sure. You know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, man, it's a process. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I can imagine myself uh, very quickly developing attachments with a mask, two masks, whatever. Um, so, I mean, and feel free to, to, for any of this to tell me none of my business, but, um, I mean, are you leave the house and it's all for like all of your comings and goings it's on or no, not, uh, no, uh, I've, I've actually been a little bit, uh, more lenient these days. I think, um, with people that I know that I'm going to be working with later, like multiple times, eventually they'll see you know what i look like but um for a gig it's in the car till i get back in the car so in that duration like i'm either putting away equipment you're not driving to, around no there's been times where i've had to anybody mess with you yeah no 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 okay no. But there's been times where I'm like, okay, well, I'm, See that guy over there? right. <laughs> I feel like when people, uh, I always get a kick out of it because um, let's just say you're at a light and, and people are coming from this side ready to take that left. Yeah. I feel like they catch a glimpse. Like I have tinted windows, but the oh, the, okay. the, the front um, – like the the windshield isn't tinted, so I feel like they see. I feel like they Yo, see I'm that tripping, woman, man. Like, I could have sworn I just saw a fucking... <laughs> yes. driving that Corolla yeah. or whatever. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's something that I've um, again, like I've I've embraced. Yeah. Uh, because the in Mexican culture, it's like they wore it everywhere, like doing their taxes to going to go eat and. All these different things, like at the DMV, they're like at the DMV. Yeah, I'm not taking it off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so now, like, I kind of keep that same mentality. Um, my dad wasn't like that at all. Like, he was just like very much, um, you know. As soon as he's done wrestling, like he's taking it off, and like he's in the crowd watching, and he, he'll drink a beer and watch the cast the rest of the show. Um, so he wasn't really like on that, and he actually puts it on in public, takes it off in public. Like, oh wow, that's that that's feels- just yeah weird that's just what he does now you know but like if if you did that with any it feels like doing that with any other of your pieces of clothing yeah like just pants come just, off yeah pants go back just, on. Right, just go back on doing, yeah man? it just it's weird yeah yeah, yeah. It's, weird. it's weird to me and i'm like dad look what are you doing like for me i i structure it differently it's like nobody can see me put it on or take it off and then yeah as it should be. for for that yeah for that period of time now and other places where i've i've known know these people and they always make the joke they're like oh shit fk min is here he's here now because i i just throw it on oh, getting sure. ready for a shoot sure. or you know yeah. for something from people i know of or like or they'll be like hey, um uh yo you guys seen frank frank's not here all right but like you know they just make all these jokes uh-huh, all the time uh-huh. and, and and joke around that or or even people still trying to figure out or um i just had a girl figure out that i was one and the same person she goes, because I met him with the mask, and I was like, oh, you know, this guy, you know, um, and uh, oh, he's a DJ, cool, you know, but then another time, she had met me just as me, and we had, you know, smoked a little bit, chill, we had some couple drinks, different things, and then just recently, um, she just figured out that it was the same <laughs> person, <laughs> and I was like, bro, no way. She's not, I, she's not the quickest flash of lightning <laughs> on this guy. Oh, my goodness. You, the amount of stories that I have with just finding out is crazy. Wow. Like, I'm like, you don't notice? Like, yeah. Some, I have a, there's a girl that's like, oh, I recognize it by, you know, your teeth, or people are like, just your voice, uh-huh. or um somebody caught it with this ring um or somebody caught it with like one person which i i feel like it should be with like more of the tats um but yeah like huh. takes a lot of people to yeah a lot of people try to figure it out and some don't and some just it just flies right by them so weird it's all good Whatever. um did you see uh the J 
Jason Kelsey after at the Super Bowl. Post- I heard, yeah, I heard about. Heard, that. Yeah, yeah, I heard about. It. I think I no, I saw him and, uh, and I I know that uh, Raven still gave uh, gave him one like a real one. Okay, yeah, well, get- so they're wherever at some club and partying and yep. and he's just up there and he has it and I was like, yeah. oh, that's so cool. Uh, who knew? I didn't know yeah. he had that in in him. And then later, I swear, uh, I saw that he found it on the ground. And I was like, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> He's probably wearing it for the game and the whole nine. Yeah, I, like, I, don't, I think. Oh, is this at the club? Just you found at the club. The, oh, yeah. man. But like on a sidewalk somewhere in Vegas. <laughs> like, oh. you take a black light to that thing, but you don't oh, know no, what dude. might be. I would have never have done that. Yeah, yeah. Anytime somebody tries to put this on, I'm like, don't, hey, hey, please hey. don't do that. Like, <laughs> please don't. You got to wear uh, one pair of my underwear and one pair of my socks for a week straight. Yeah. Before I'll let you put <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how you, that's, you got to pass that time. Yeah. Oh, man. No, this like, is, yes, I don't need to wear the mask. Yeah. That. <laughs> no, this is not the business. Yeah. I, even, I, you know, it's more uh, drunk girls that are always like, can oh, I, can I sure. wear the mask? Like, I'm like, Dude, get out of here yeah. just get out yeah. <laughs> like, i would, would not let yeah. anybody wear it yeah i'm good on that <laughs> um i want to move uh into your list so we can get you out of here and on to your gig but uh should we do we need to take five get a different beverage hit the restroom or you just want to roll through yeah let's roll through okay what time is it oh yeah we're oh wow yeah wow yeah okay that happens sometimes. all right let's go uh so thank you for the list uh starts in 1972 superfly yeah. Curtis Mayfield, third of 22 for him. Nine tracks, 36 minutes. Killer album to kick things off. Uh, one of the few soundtracks to outgross the film that it accompanied. Um, and I, you know, I knew some of the tracks growing up, but I feel like the sort of movie renaissance of the 90s with Quentin Tarantino yeah. really pushed this album to the forefront uh is that does that seem fair is that accurate yeah yeah i would say so um superfly wasn't introduced till much later um it wasn't an album that i heard as a yeah i I feel like um, freddie's dead and give me your love and um uh, pusher man are the ones that i heard i i was so embarrassed i I thought because fishbone later covered freddy ah and got put, you and i was like oh that's inter- are they talking about freddy krueger and yeah yeah only for this i was like <laughs> holy shit that's a curtis yeah. mayfield song yeah yeah it's a curtis mayfield song <laughs> yeah and i don't know when i bought this album because it's i have it in my my car uh and nice. i listen to it all the time um on repeat the entire thing i think it's a, a deluxe version too but yeah i don't know this this album just like hits for me like every Curtis Mayfield, I'm just a fan of his voice. So like, good. Love his voice. Love Al Green too. And this one and and the uh the the film, actually when I actually saw the film after I heard the album. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And um I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't a fan of the film. Yeah. I think it was I think it was just like a music video for like all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much it. Like yep. you just that's all you heard. So <clears throat> um but yeah. I was uh I mean I got over it really quick, but when this album first hit my radar, I was a little offended because mm-hmm. Superfly to me was always Jimmy Snow. Ah, I got you. And I like you can't be super. Superfly yeah, is already not a, super, yeah. And then I was like, oh, I, yeah, I guess you were. Yeah, first. yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. Um, so seventy two all the way to nineteen ninety five. Um, I love firsts. Mm-hmm. Um, for for this podcast sure um I, in fact i think every album on your list that the artists that made those albums are first time sure. appearances sure. on anybody's list which is something to geek out about of course um and mob deep yeah not only has there not been any mob deep records on anybody's list i have never sat down and listened to mob deep mm. but they've always been very like akin to other things that I've been for listening. sure. Like I knew at some point for sure we'd cross paths. So I was curious to see yes. how this one uh, sat with me. The infamous second of eight, sixteen tracks, sixty six minutes. I thought it was fantastic, um, and I noticed uh, you, you've got some uh, East Coast and some West Coast hip hop things happening. Definitely, I've never like felt particularly partial 
to one or the other, but I've always jived more with the West Coast stuff. Definitely. Like, like mm-hmm. Biggie, I know people love Biggie. Biggie's just not for me. I'm, I'm a, I love Tupac. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to force myself to like uh, <laughs> Wu Tang, and yeah. there are elements about them that I really do like. For sure. Um, but it all, for you know, Jay Z, what, what, it just never. It's never felt like my lane. <clears throat> gotcha. Excuse me, my lane. Um, but there's a lot of East Coast stuff that's kind of bubbling back up. I think sure. these days. So I was any, anyway. Um, Prodigy and Havoc out of Queens. Uh, I dug it. I'm excited to check out other stuff by them. Do you know the rest of their stuff? And why is this one special for you, man? Um... I got introduced to East Coast rap uh, through my boy Zerk uh, in, in freshman year. I didn't, I didn't, I never knew the root of of, uh, of hip hop per se because I was introduced to West Coast stuff first as well. Um, but I instantly became more of a Biggie fan than Pac. Um, really? Yeah. Once I heard, okay. Once I heard Biggie's first record, shots fired. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. A lot of people would disagree just because I was born in Oakland and in the Bay right, and these things. Right. But um, I didn't find out about Mob Deep till I was here. And this is at the tail end of uh, my depressing time. Um, this album, uh, I don't know what song I heard. I think it was their their um, their main one, Shook Ones Part Two. That was their their hit on this one. Um, you know, this is a second release. They had one in 90, 94, I believe, where they were just a tad bit younger. Uh, well, obviously a year younger, but they uh, it didn't hit for them, mm. and so they had to restructure everything that they were doing. Um, you know, Nas had came out in '94, his his first album, um, and so they were kind of like, "Man, this is gonna represent and like we gotta come come back and and hit them with with our stuff, but harder." And so that's when they came up with this one, and all of Havoc's beats are on there, just like that snare. It's a snare for me. Um, it's Prodigy's, um, you know, um, it it his rap ability is is conversational more mm. than more than the rap cadence it's just more like he's speaking to you um and through a time when i was trying to to visualize where i wanted to go next getting out of this this deep place that i did not want to be in this was um this was very pivotal this is very um like th- this is a motivator for me uh to to just you know, kind of keep going and, and get yourself, you know, where you need to be with 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 the the right attitude and and, and a lot, um, you know, being with your brothers, being with, um, you know, the survival of the fittest. It's like these these titles, these uh, the temperatures rising, like all these different um, plays on words and 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 what they were spitting, what they were talking about was just I just I needed that at that time. Awesome. So this is this is day in day out this album. And uh, at the time, I believe I was cleaning carpets, uh, just going around the city, <sighs> huge van, dirty with sewer water and and all sorts of things. And uh, this is another album I keep in my car mm. as well on CD. And uh, yeah, I love this album with all my heart for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> Here Come the Horns, uh, Delinquent Habits, 1998, uh, the title tells me this is going to be enjoyable yeah man whether you like it or not it's good yep. there's no way uh west that's west coast second of eight for them 15 tracks 59 minutes latin tinged rap out of la with uh tyus to cypress hill which is a, a win-win for me yep. uh um i wish that i had more, more cassette art uh of gray boy oh, right. uh well, I, I wish that I uh, there was some of his album art had uh, some of his other records had pictures of him. Gotcha. And I could do uh, what I really wanted to do when I started this mirror was put uh, album art of photos of Cypress Hill from all their records. Nice. It didn't pan out yeah. that way, but I, I I like the way that it turned out. The mirror turned out regardless. Love it. Um, Send dog, be real, DJ Mugs. I mean. You know, Black Sunday was awesome. Yeah, but when you start getting to like their their third and fourth, they kill. Yeah, I mean with beats, with raps, with all that edge. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's a couple times like, guys, we don't do we need to be this violent? Like, but nevertheless, uh, tell me about um, delinquent habits for you. How you discovered them? Yeah, do you know their other stuff? Of course, of course. It's funny that you say the East Coast and the West Coast thing because DJ Muggs came from uh, the East Coast as an East Coast producer, really like. Um, he had more of his roots were there okay. and then had kind of ventured into the the Cypress thing and Cypress was still not necessarily West Coast for a lot of people. It still got played into this East Coast ways, but also in the rock category too. That's why Cypress was touring with with all the you know, smashing pumpkins yeah. too, you know. Yeah. I mean they're on like Hullapalooza through Simpsons, you know. <laughs> that they're actually uh I just found out that they're the uh in that clip of the Simpsons they are being paired up with this orchestra. And they're like, hey, um, they're like, oh, you know, that they're going to have to like share the stage. And they're like, well, do you know Insane in the Brain? And they're like, oh, we, we know classical music. And they're like, so they play the song and then the orchestra starts getting it. Well, now in real life, they're actually playing together um, from the, that orchestra and Cypress Hill. Simpsons that cl- collab. Yeah, that is now in real now life real, now. Wow. Yeah. Um, so going to this, um, uh, I, I don't know if I wrote down Psycho Realm on there as one of them, one of the albums, but... Um, out of Cypress Hill, Send Dog joined this group and helped this group get to a little bit where they're at. And then in Psycho Realm, B Real helped that group get that. Oh wow! That go- yeah, that going. Um, so this this is uh, Ivory Ives, Kimo the Black Skin, and DJ OG Style. And I grew up on this album. I grew really? up on this band. Um, this is my dad's favorite. This is had it on me actually nice yes oh wow uh-huh. but this album cover comes from um the band i heard in tijuana by herp alpert and that's that's what sampled this and then that's why it's actually on my arm because there's this it's like the uh ideology of sampling and taking so like my version there's a church right here but i actually have the alamo and tower of america oh, cool. um but this album yeah I mean, anything that labels me, anything that comes from a producer standpoint, this was the major influence. It's West Coast funk. It's in implementing these, um, these horns and these, um, still these these records that they've sampled from soul tracks and and made this this, I don't this I don't know this greatness that can ever can ever be replicated. Um, these guys are one of a kind. Um, from um, you know, uh, this is L. A. I specifically remember and the visualization visualization is so crazy to me because my dad used to have um I got it right here. He used to have this uh this um outfit where uh he'd wear like a jersey, um, per se, like a uh, just like a regular jersey that'd have like a number two because he'd he's Lemos Dos. Um he'd have that on, but he, his pants had like this uh this weird like stripe on them so it kind of like come down in this way like around the leg and it'd be like a like it'd kind of go like this and it would be on the side of it when i ever hear this this uh i don't think i can find it but whenever i hear this song i think of those stripes as the piano melodies oh interesting yes because around this time he was playing this song in that era of that clothing okay. so it always resonated with his outfit brain is amazing yes isn't it? man and with the style of music and who they were just it starts out you know with the piano and then there's a sample from this old mob movie and it goes into um uh uh what is it a tupac sample it wouldn't be la without mexicans it wouldn't be and then it just the the drums on there and then ah oh, the verses from from their their voices and then the scratching with OG style blended perfectly in every one of these tracks, um, all the way down to Western Ways. West, yeah, Western Ways is when I found out about Sade because they sampled the Sade sample in that one. Um, so all these little bits and pieces, there was like these these different samples uh, that ventured off into like finding the originals and then mm. knowing that they they came this where they came from. That's what that you know. This album and anything else they've they've uh, thrown, even their first album, um, all the way up until I want to say 2006 is kind of where they stopped and kind of broke off. I think uh, OG Style had passed away. Oh yeah. Um, they 
they were on point with it. I think Ives went on to do his own things. I wasn't really a fan. Kimo the Black Skin, uh, he spit two more albums that I, I enjoyed, my, me and my dad enjoyed. We actually got the pleasure of uh, talking to him on the phone at one point, and he was able to kind of break down some of these samples in the first record because they would sample this uh, this lady who apparently was homeless. She was just a bag lady. And so they'd always find some way to record her and saying these outlandish things and that all those samples were on this album and the first album. Oh, wow. So, yeah, deep connections with this. Grew up off of Delinquent Habits. Um, and obviously, you know, I have yeah. um, tatted on me. Yeah. Cool. yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, 98. We moved to 2001. Mr. Don't Play. Everything's working. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Who, so... Three of 10, 20 tracks, 73 minutes. We've gone Chicago to Queens to LA to Tennessee. Yeah. Who is Project Pat? Man. And what's your discovery story for Mr. Don't Play? Project Pat and the whole 3 Six Mafia. I found uh, I found out about them in seventh grade. Somebody, okay. somebody stole my CD player at the time. And uh, I was listening to like the radio stuff. My mom was... My mom was not very happy with what my dad listened to, all the explicit lyrics and things like that. So uh, a lot of it was I couldn't play it around her, but I could play it with my dad. It was very different. Um, I Radio stuff with mom. Uh, When somebody sold the CD player, I was playing football at the time. So I found the CD player and uh it had new headphones attached and it had two CDs inside. Disc man or something? Yeah, just like a, a blue I don't know. I don't think it's like a Samsung or some something like that. But it's just a blue CD player. My grandmother had had uh, bought me for Christmas one year, and back then, you know, it was like going through CD players like nothing and MP3 players, and because I, you know, I either listened to them or just didn't take care of them or they would fall or whatever, just something. Um, so I was just always had something one of uh, 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 one or the other. Um, so the CD player, I found it because somebody had left the cd player in the sh- in their shoulder pads and just left it out like and i looked one of your at, teammates stole it I, I think it was one of I, I think it was one of the eighth graders uh, seventh graders you know it's starting off so the eighth graders would finish then they would be back the next day after us so they left it on the ground and i said yo coach that's my cd player and they go yeah and i was like yeah I, I, somebody stole this from my locker and it's well you know get it take it you know so i grabbed everything um wrapped it up left didn't even check what was in it nothing i found two cds in there it was a metallica cd which i knew nothing about metallica (laughs) and it was a a burnt blue disc scratched up just no label on it nothing and the first song on this was cheese and dope by project pat when i heard project pat three six mafia you know a lot of them could say like they're devil worshipers or like they just you know their stuff was real like harsh and just heavy underground memphis stuff it was not anything i was supposed to be listening to but it was thrilling and it was like i found this i'm so glad you stole yeah. my shit right 100 <laughs> percent. i was like man what is this huh like i didn't um there was probably like three to four tracks on here but since it was a burnt CD, it had tracks from all other records and albums that they had dropped from Project Pat to just Three Six Mafia stuff. Oh wow! So and a lot of it would cut off because it was scratched. I didn't. I I had to go find years later the the full song, and I it was almost like I was hearing hearing it for the first time again because cool. I would hear this whole other verse. Wow! And I was like, I didn't even know that that you know. <laughs> so I was so used to it. Just okay. That's I've only heard that snippet. That cut off. Next one. And um, ironically enough, you know, I say devil worshippers. I would listen to this on Sunday oh, because my mom would go to work all day Sunday. So since she didn't want me to listen to this, it would just be me and my sister at the crib the whole entire day. And I'm listening to this album on repeat every day, all Sunday, like as much as I could. Yeah. It was this this Project Pat and all of 3-6. Wow. And uh, it wasn't until years later that I found this one. And I got to listen to the entire thing, and this became one of my uh, my top albums for cool. sure. Yeah, man. very cool. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm pretty excited for this next one. It's just a three year leap ahead to 2004. Mm, food. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. Uh, fifth of six for him. Fifteen tracks, forty eight minutes. Born in London, but moved to Long Island. Yes, sir. A masked supervillain with lots of projects mm. and collaborations. 
How'd this guy land in your lap? Yeah, this is the god, man. I, I found out about him uh, through my boy Zerk again. Okay. Finding out East Coast things, and, and Doom was one of them. Uh, put me on to Doom and, and completely blew my mind um, from the, um, you know, from the uh, food-themed, um, you know, titles to um, his lyrics, his production, how quirky and funny he was with his per per production and how clever he was with his bars and his double to triple entendres. Um, there is a lot of play in into who Doom was and uh, what he brought to the table. He was your he was your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Nice. 100%. Um, you know, um, Doom had all these things about him that just, I don't know, just excited made me excited about hip hop and and uh around this time uh, this is 04 so i didn't i learned about doom and and that would be 09 and at that time he just dropped like another um album on another label no on his own actually because this is through um was it yeah rhyme series there you go it was through rhyme series so he made this if you're familiar with uh uh man, what is the the radio show um stretch and bobito Stre so stretch and bobito where um they were doing this show in new york that was uh it was on this um like you you couldn't get the the it was like a radio show for uh for college so you couldn't find um the channel just on a blank you had to like really search for it and they would premiere new artists so early wu-tang early biggie they would be on the stretch and bobito show and uh bobito was the you know the uh the uh speaker and stretch was like this tall white dude just on the decks and they would feature new things um so bobito is actually on this album um and he was uh they recorded it at bobito's place oh. around that time so there was a lot of like dipping and diving into into these different things but um yeah this album from the jump um there's even a, a red bull interview that's like two hours long and it talks about he breaks down this album cool from from beef rap to um you know some of like the the one beer and all these different things um we just did a mf doom tribute uh not too long ago he he passed away on um I think it was Halloween or before that. In like 2020 or something? Yeah, like yeah. a couple years ago, which I just found out that uh, it's really shitty to even think about. But apparently the doctors had given him some oh. some some uh, medicine during the time he was like, he'd went to the hospital, something to help him out. And it had like a different effect on him and his brain needed more oxygen and they failed to like oh, recognize shit. that. So he ultimately ended up passing away. Um <sighs> And so, yeah, Doom was Doom was funny. I mean, he used to hire other imposters to go up there and perform at his shows, and people rioted because it wasn't Doom; it was some other guy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all these different things, man. Like, love Doom. Love uh, all his beats are very legendary. Um, sample wise, um, his use of of comic books, um, playing off of Spider Man, playing oh, yeah. off of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll have to send you. Um, I have you on Instagram, so I'll send you this little ad reel I did um, to promote our one year our um, our tribute show, and you'll see a lot of like the snippets that I use in TV format. Like I'm changing the channel, you'll see a lot of like the 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 samples that he used um, versus like the Spider Man clips or when he's rapping and different things. And um, we really took um, the show, and I wanted to extend it out, so I had like two chefs come in and collaborate and cook some of these these. Um, uh things so like i had a special it's like one beer and a shot for like seven bucks or um they did like a beef wrap um burrito you know or uh a chile a chile con chile con queso yeah. burrito yeah. you know um so we this we is who that put this show on oh uh so funny enough uh me and steady we did it at the record bar i had a bunch of people that were doom heads that i challenged everybody to do um uh beats or a set that was that was specifically to uh commemorate his life you know nothing i didn't want them to come in and perform their own stuff i wanted them to do like maybe two songs of their own and then come like with the right time 
come through and make something and 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 uh, showcase something that they'd made to commemorate Doom. Um, so I even had like uh, this band called Gemini Parks. There's another group, jazz group that they're called uh, Bad Bad Not Good, and they did like a full cover of just like jazz, uh, but Doom cuts. And so I had always had that infatuation with that. So I had Gemini Parks pick some of these songs. Uh, matter of fact, every artist on the ticket on, for that show, I assigned them an album. I said, pick an out, pick a song, a couple songs from each album, and and see what you could do with it. So they picked this one, and um, performed guitar, the drums, and everything. And then I think even one of those so- songs, I got up there and spit like a whole doom verse, for real? like the whole nice. yeah. Is there footage? The of whole it? thing. Uh, yeah, there's actually footage cool. of it. I'll find that for cool. you. But um, yeah, we had so much fun, and um, to all of us in that room, and to anybody who's a real fan of hip hop, knows doom and knows like what he brought to, to the table and, and every collaboration from doing things with adult swim to, um, to Mad Lib and his collaborations with, um, you know, uh, Red Bull and all sorts of different things. So yeah, man. Cool. It was dope. Yeah. Uh, last but not least all the way to 2017, we go for the good book volume two, yeah. the alchemist and budgie. Yeah, man. Um, this was not as easy to find as the rest. Yeah, uh, definitely not. 17 studio albums for Alchemist, plus three instrumental LPs, including at least two with mm-hmm. Budgie. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, I think, has 45 tracks and runs about 75 minutes long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Love this Ties album. to many, including Cypress Hill, Dilated Peoples, and more. What's this one about for you? You know, Alchemist is the... F- uh, second producer to take on Mob Deep and create Mob Deep sound after this album. Um, so he had came in. Um, Alchemist had came from DJ Muggs. Alchemist used to sleep on DJ Muggs's couch and learn everything. Then out, uh, he ended up going to school in New York. T- got tied up with DJ Muggs's people, but he actually got tied up with uh, Mob Deep's siblings. And started oh. producing from them, and okay. then found Mob Deep and started producing for Mob Deep after this album or the next album, huh. um, and then pretty much just stuck with them the whole way. Like Prodigy, Alchemist were like that. And same with uh, Havoc, but he really brought them home uh, with a lot of their albums moving forward. I've always been an Alchemist fan from that time, but more so from from other projects as well. I mean, Alchemist has been around for for a while since Mob Deep and has created so many really good hits um this one per se I, I i heard two before i heard one um but this one was interesting uh this was around the same time as as the mob deep t- uh time that i heard it um it was on repeat i think both of these albums were on repeat um i went to san antonio drove to san antonio the 12 hours i did that it was one time i did it just by myself without anybody coming with me and uh, I think it was like a total of like eight times on full that made me get to, you know, help me to get there. But um, I love it so much because this is such a great collaboration on um, there's different perceptions here. There's different styles that run here. Alchemist has always been the gritty, you know, very like menacing style of beats, mm. you know, very much um, taking these like loops from these records and these these chops and and this uh this collaging that he does himself um that creates this environment that um resembles what mob deep is um so on this one his take on gospel records and church records made it sound like it's a little bit more of like in in a menacing darker style Mm. budgie on the other hand did it more of a gospel like hey we're here to praise kind of style uh, and he included a lot of like r&b artists and these these singers while budgie uh included a lot of like the newest mcs to the oldest mcs so mob deep has actually has a um, one on here called uh let me see uh try my hand and to me that's the last track that uh mob deep made together with alchemist before prodigy had passed away from his sickle cell um Every everybody else on here, like the transitions on how each song blends into the next is beautiful. Yeah. The transition from the way this catalog of music blends into budgies, um, just front to back, it's just so ear pleasing. And I know this one word word for word, song by song, like yeah, hundred percent. Um, not necessarily this one. I know it 
how it sounds, but word for word here on this one for sure, um, because he brought back a lot of his early guys he worked with, and and of course, like I, like I said, uh, the newer guys. Um, but this one, uh, when he's giving me the list, it was hard to kind of pinpoint because I do have other Alchemist um, beat tapes that I that I love and collaborations. His early stuff, he did a lot of like, okay, let's just throw a bunch of artists on my early beats, and it was called the first one he did was uh, First in- Infantry, um, and First Infantry. Um, you can tell like from that one to this one how much his beats have like changed that first oh, wow. yeah it was like early 2000s everything was just um that real like uh new york um uh you know 2000 new york instead of like the 90s boom yeah. bap stuff yeah. there was a lot more like um uh double hi-hats and, and things like that but um yeah this one around this time was was definitely keeping me up and motivated and um just had an equal balance um yeah uh i actually bought this uh physical copy and it's actually two cds that come in a bible oh cool so it's like a full bible and you open it into two cds nice yeah it's pretty cool i have that in in the uh i have this one in the whip too and uh and this one as well so um yeah man very cool (laughs) well it's a great list i really appreciate it yeah Uh, of course Five uh, funny finishers, as I as I like to call them. This is a quick little list of goofy questions. Sure, and get you out of here. Yeah. Uh, if if we all, uh, whether we admit it or not, have a, a personal and a professional bucket list. Mm. Imagine that you're given all the necessary resources to hammer out your number one on both of those lists. What would they be? So it's the personal, and what's the other one? Professional. Uh. And sometimes they're one and the same. I mean. Professional bucket list it would be Alchemist at some point or sometime. However, we cross paths in some capacity, work with that man like cool. on a, on a personal level. Yeah, hundred percent. That'd be one. Um, you know, I could say everybody else on here, but I think st- like career wise and just to pick his brain. Yeah, Alchemist for sure on okay. a professional level. Personal. Um get all the lucha loads in my family together and take a big picture i feel like that's can be done um but it's definitely one that i i want that big portrait i want all of us in the same room then you're then you're gonna have to paint the portrait right (laughs) (laughs) baby 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 (laughs) yeah we'll we'll see we'll see yeah that might that be that would be a good painting you might have just answered question two with your answer for your sure number one but lunch with anyone you're choosing dead or alive who are you picking and why oh man uh i mean it had to be my grandfather okay yeah cool i didn't i didn't uh uh out of i would say out of all the men in my family he was the most business savvy one and most uh versatile in a lot of things um, him and my uncle Frank, which is not on the same family. It's uh, that's on my my uh, grandma's family, um, and he actually just passed a month ago. But if I were to grab their information as of now, as an adult, I think that would that would yeah, because I I didn't know much. You know, he, he my grandpa had passed when he when I was like uh, shoot before I came here, like 2011, uh, and I was still in high school. And yeah. at the mo at most, you know, I did, I was really from afar. He was, you know, on his deathbed. He was going back and forth, dialysis, all these different things. But as of now, like, just as a man's perspective and just as an adult and what I'm trying to do, I feel like he's the closest thing towards being that man in my life that did cool. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um. You know, granted, I, there's people here that I've met along the way that have become strong mentors for me. Sure. But somebody just from the family itself, yeah, hundred percent. Like nice. my grandfather for sure. Very cool. Yeah, man. Yep. Uh, you're given the ability to visit your past self at any age. What age are you choosing, and what are you saying? Oh uh, man. Twenty. What was that like twenty? I've been 2014, Frank. I just beat the shit out of me. What? <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's when I was, I was a shitty dude. I was just a really, yeah. You're um, not saying anything to your your thrown hands. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was I was uh, out of pocket for a lot of things that I did around that time. I hurt a lot of people. 
I did a lot of uh, a lot of messed up things, um, but that was all the trauma I was going through. Um, there was a lot of things that I shouldn't have done that uh, I would I I definitely needed my ass kicked around that time. I needed to be chin checked. Um, granted, I think just the just life happening and the things that occurred as the repercussions. Um, obviously, that did something to to be in a place that I'm now but yeah I was out of pocket around 2014 um because that's that's when I was like in a relationship and trying to figure it out and just angry at the world and just going going through it but there were some things that I just like I I never I don't regret anything I've done I think everything I've done up to this point has made me and it's a learning lesson but around that time yeah I just I would have just kicked my own ass Damn. around that time wow. yeah for okay. sure yeah okay yeah 100% <laughs> please complete this for me please yeah sure um the world would immediately become a better place in which to live if only man dude if only we just like understood each perspective and really like learn from each other and and really understand like we're we're all different but man we go through some shit still like we're still the same you know what i'm saying like every nobody's nobody's special or you know has like an upper hand like no dude we really just need to come together and and like talk to one another and figure out like how we can um do things together you know what i'm saying um i definitely have have been if there's any time where i've been chin checked in a format where it's non-aggressive and it's more of like let me give you a different perspective on like age or where i've been or or what you're going through at this moment like i've definitely taken that um and it i've taken that i've disregarded it because i've had so much pride but nowadays when i've ran into situations where somebody's acting out of line in in a in a form of like pride and machismo or they want to throw hands and things like that cuz i'm not a confrontational dude only when i need to be but we'll like let's let's hash it out if you get me there i mean you're stuck there that's <laughs> that's just what it is you're bad but yeah 100% <laughs> but um i've i just remember in these these instances where i've just been told some things um you know just just speaking to me and i've relayed that same style of message or that same style of of um of mindset to other people who think i'm going to come with the same energy they're bringing but once i bring the opposite and they don't expect it it's like it's more of a a, honestly a mind fuck for them because they're just like Oh fuck! Now they because now they these have to, aren't the droids you're looking yeah, for. <laughs> nah, hundred percent. They had to think twice about what they just told, what they just did, and get put in their place with a lighter, you know, repercussion. You know, what I'm saying it's like, all right, I'm gonna let me chin check you real quick and just get a little bit of this this knowledge that that I can relay based on what you're going through because I understand that at at most, you know. So, cool. but yeah, this last one I usually. Um read it more generic that i'm going to hear but for your sake i'll throw in some specifics sure it is totally okay and acceptable for fk menace to put on his mf doom shirt to go to the mf doom show is it totally acceptable true or false yeah yeah. The way that it normally reads is uh to wear the t shirt of the artist whose show you're going to. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I li- I like to uh uh to say that w- w- I know you like that guy cuz we're at the show together. Yeah. So while you're here show you, know, you should show me something else you're into. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. Um yeah, that's interesting. I mean, if it wasn't his shirt per se, it's probably like my brand, you know, because I'm walking around. If I was at an MF Doom show, I'd b- definitely be masked up. Okay. Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, there's shows where I've been masked up before and I'm I'm there. You nice. know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Yeah. Somebody were to catch me, it's like, oh, FK, you know. But even then, just like at some point, I'm going to want to take a, f- a photo. Yeah. 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 I think I did like uh, Timeless Refineries. I think I did, what was it? A, um, they did like a weed fest uh, in uh, man, where was that? It was a while back, but they had brought out like a bunch of hip hop artists, Joey Badass and Wiz Khalifa, and like all these people. Um, and uh, Timeless had hired me for um, content for their brand. Okay, so they wanted me to like take photos at their booth and do these different things, and then put a, put together like a little recap. 
Um, and I did that, but that's an entirely different brand from Menace. So I took all those photos and all that stuff with the mask on and was like, no, like if I'm, cause I've realized like over time, like a camera is like a VIP badge. Really, if you think about it, you walk in anywhere with confidence, holding a ladder, it's like you work there. Oh, yeah. So uh -huh. it's like yeah. I'm walking in with confidence. I got the badge on, uh, but it only lets me go so far. And I also have a camera. So automatically I'm press and I'm walking and I'm asking people and I'm, I'm talking, whatever. I'm, hey, let me get a photo the whole nine. Um, <laughs> I went to, uh, I went to, funny story, I went to like the first. So like here's the, um, all the people, right? And then there's like this little split section for like wheelchair accessibility. And then it's like a gate that separates the next group of people. Uh, but on the sides, there's like two people standing to guard the entries towards backstage. I wanted to go backstage so bad because I was like, man, there's like, I know some of these artists. I kind of grew up with them. You know, I want to go take that flick. Um, so Timeless gives me um, access to like their like kind of VIP area on both sides. There's two trailers and they have people that have purchased the their spots on the trailers or they're given the sponsor or whatever. And they're like, yeah, so you're actually allowed like, um, you know, here, here, here. Come back to the trailer if you need to use a restroom, if you need a uh, drink, whatever. Cool. Um, so I go up to the first guy. I said, hey, like, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get backstage. I'm with, you know, Timeless, whatever. And like. Oh, you need the actual, you need the, you need the, the one with the gold sticker on it. You have the red one or whatever. I said, so if I go back and get that sticker, I can, I can go through here and like, yeah, yeah, just come back and, and, you know, we'll get you. All right, bet. And I knew I wasn't going to get the sticker. So I walk around to come more, a couple more photos and do whatever. And uh, I go back to the other side around and I said, Hey, uh, I'm with Timeless. I'm just trying to get backstage and just got the badge, whatever. And they're like, Again, like, oh, you need the sticker. I said, okay, so if I go back and get the sticker, like, I can go, go through here. And they're like, yeah, 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 go for it. You know, it's like, all right, bet. I'll, I'll come back around. Uh, so I'm, like, in that trailer vicinity and going back and forth, whatever. Then there's a whole other section over there where all the vendors are at. So I'm just, I'm literally just walking around. And then um, I find, like, this little slice between the wheelchair accessibility and and the um, the uh, the crowd in, in between. And then there's like this little pathway and there's uh, porter potties, but the pathway just keeps going all the way towards the stage in the middle of two separating crowds. And I'm like, oh shit, like I just walked down there. It's a bunch of photographers, like why not? So I get through I get through, and uh, I'm taking photos and mind you, I'm masked up, right? They don't know who I am. I'm not even with those group of photographers, nothing. I have my badge. And uh, finally, I just said, all right, let me just uh, go on to the side right here because I'm already basically in. So the guy is standing right here and the gate's right there. He's outside of the gate, but every once in a while he'll come back in. I've already spoken to him, so I just go in and get on stage and get right there and back. And there's there's a two artists, there's a one artist I'm looking for to take a, a picture with and everything. And mind you, when I was on this other side taking photos, that lady had already seen me too. So now I'm in. And so I get up there, I'm masked up the whole nine. And I just want the flick, but I don't want to put my mask on. Remember, like, it's from the time I get off the car to the time I jump in the car. And so it's already on, and I see Joey Badass come through, and, and he's looking at me weird. Mind you, I'm too high for my own good. Like, oh I, had, I had already <laughs> taken so much. Yeah. So, like, I'm nervous. You're having these conversations yeah. with these people. Yeah. Oh, and I'm man. blitzed. Like, I should not even be there anymore, but I'm like, dude, oh, I have to, like, scared. yeah, I like, I have to get through beautiful hot no but there's a guy there right <laughs> right and and there's like these um gorgeous females like a group of them Ooh. i'm talking to them and nothing is coming out correctly <laughs> at all uh and and i'm just like i'm just just chill out for the flick well you know how they say like you, you know fly too close to the sun i had you know the stage is is like right here and i'm i'm like right here i was like walking towards the stage the camera and all and the dude's like hold on and he's just like hey man who are you? And he's like, let me see your badge. And I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, this ain't the right badge. You need to go back or whatever. And so uh, all I did was like I veered back this way into this corner around like because the stage comes here and then there's just kind of this corner. So I stay right here and I just chill. And I was like, let me just kick it here and so I can get that flick. And so, again, he sees me and he's just like, you know, looking at me. And I was like, hey, man, let me I just, I'm just here to grab a pick, man. I'm with Timeless. 
all right, man, come on, come on. So I had the mask on and everything, took the flick, and I, I got it. And next thing, I think the next day, Timeless is like, man, how'd you get back there? I was like, listen, <laughs> that's a long story. Sit down. I, yeah. I was like, but I did it, though. So um, I don't know why I was telling that story, uh, though. But I, <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. The, uh, T-shirt to the show. T-shirt, yeah. T-shirt to the show. So like wearing my own thing would 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 probably be number one just because I want to take the photo yeah, with so and so. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Cool man. <laughs> um, so FK Menace uh, on Facebook and Instagram, FK Menace dot Squarespace dot com, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube, Alpha Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Deezer, uh, Sabos underscore KC. Yep. Uh, and the first Friday with with Made Mob, Made Mob, yep. And then I also have another duo I'm in. Uh, it's uh, Sintope KC. So that's a uh, that's another duo uh, with me and uh, Juan Carlos from the band Making Movies. Okay, uh, we're actually a duo. So I'll DJ and he'll play the percussion efforts on top of what I do. Um, and yeah, we do that at the ship uh, monthly. So our next show would be April thirteenth, and then our next one would be May thirty first. So okay, yeah, that's a, that's another entity there too. Cool. But yeah, man. Uh, anything? Any other plugs? Anything you wanted to cover that we didn't touch on? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you can follow my crew, Night Shift Crew, uh, to San Antonio. That's the five of us. Uh, if you want to follow my dad, that's Lemos Dos. Lemos uh, L E M U S uh, underscore Dos D O D O S. This is Instagram. Yep, this is Instagram. What was the yep. first? What was the crew? Uh, night shift crew. Night so shift crew. Night, all one word. Yep. Night dot shift and then uh, dot crew K R U. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, any any of those that you mentioned, those are like five six accounts I run. So yeah, it's cool. all there, man. Right yeah, on. Hundred percent. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate so you nice to meet you, you yeah, and definitely. talk to you soon. Definitely.